Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we are live, live on Neves Knives, ladies and gentlemen. Nova Scotia's in the house. What's up, Brian? Shout out to Nova Scotia. I see Ed's in here. What's up, Ed? Um, uh, Mason, what's going on, guys? So we got uh, a few things to get into. I got a bunch of topics written down. Where the hell did my book go? Um, I'm going to try. I don't know if this will work while I'm live. I want to put a bunch of stuff linked in the description of the things we're going to talk about today. So as people come in here, um, I'll continue to explain. Now, tomorrow I'm planning on doing the, the first um, live for the members. So anybody who is a, a Bang Gang squad member or Bang Gang member uh, tomorrow at probably right around noon my time so 12 o'clock central we will be going live now i'm going to probably allow everyone to be able to see it but only the members will be able to comment i'm doing that on purpose so that people recognize what's going on and can become members if they want to now shout out to everybody who has became members that's amazing i think we have 45 members that's awesome that's so amazing um so basically what we're doing over there is teaching sharpening and also other things too but a lot of it's going to surround sharpening um i'll probably try to reach out to some of the companies to get sharpening supplies and things like that things to donate to you guys <clears throat> But also um, being able to work with you guys one on one. So if you guys have an issue, we can deal with it right there and I can help you right there live and also, you know, possibly bring people in, you know, like that they could show me their issue and I can tell them directly what their issue is if they're able to do that. If not, it's not a big deal. I most likely can figure out what your issue is pretty easily. Where the hell is my book? Uh, did I? Oh, there it is. Dropped it. So, um, the jacket that I wear. So I wound up buying uh, Talica for his birthday a jacket. His birthday was like right, right around the same day as mine. He got me a birthday gift. Um, but a lot of people ask me about this jacket, and it's it's a really nice jacket. It's very affordable. Um, but I wound up buying him one, and he loves it. Now I've gotten question about it so many times. I can't link it. But you guys can get one. It's um real easy to find. You just have to look up Redhead Ranch jackets. They come in two different colors. It feels like suede. It looks like suede. I mean, you would think it is suede, but it's it's sixty seven percent cotton, and then the rest is like polyester. Um, it feels just like suede. Um, but one thing that's good about it not being suede is that it's easy to wash. Um, but yeah, I love it. I absolutely love this jacket. It's double stitched. It's really good quality. When I seen it, I bought it right away because of all the double stitching on it. Like you can just looking at it, you can see it's really good quality, but it's only like 60 bucks. So it's very affordable for what you get. Now, what's really cool about it also is you can put a hoodie on under it. And it looks really good with a hoodie underneath it, you know, with the jacket on top. Because it is just a jacket. It's not a coat. It's just a jacket. But I, in the environment I'm in, which is very cold, I like to layer. Now, sometimes if it's blistering cold, yeah, I'll wear a coat. But I like to uh, to just layer, you know, long sleeve or like T-shirt, long sleeve, hoodie, and then a jacket, um, you know, snow cap or whatever. Uh, because then when I get to work, I can strip layer off, right? Rather than um, taking one big thing off. So um, I can regulate my, my temperature. Breeze, what's up, Breeze? Breeze is in the house. Shout out to my cousin, Breeze. Um, the only issue is that Unite for Viewers caused me to spend way too much damn money. I know what you mean, man. Me too, me too. And it's... uh. A lot to do with you guys. You guys will remind me what just dropped, even though I'll be subtly ignoring stuff that I don't know about. Somehow, some way, shape, or form, you guys will know something dropped, and I won't. And you guys will make sure to remind me. Send me the messages. Oh, I just got mine. I just got mine. And then I'll be sitting there, you know, wanting to get it. Um, 
So somebody sent me a couple knives to keep. The one is in the other room, so I don't have it in here. But I do have one of them on me right now. So shout out to him. He knows who he is. But it is a fat carbon fiber mini bag lighter. Now I have the mini sheepdog in the fat carbon fiber, and this is 20 CV. So now I got the 4V bag lighter. I love these little bag lighters. Um, the big one too. I love all of them. They got the XL, the big one, then the minis. Now these minis, the ones with the fat carbon, um, come in. Well, this one's 20 CV. My aluminum one is uh, 4V, which I really love 4V. I love it. And then my frag pattern titanium one is 20 CV or no M390. Sorry, M390, which is basically the same thing, but awesome, awesome knife. Love it. The action on these things is just ridiculous. Um, those Chi Town wins ain't no joke. If you haven't experienced it, you can't understand. Yeah, no, it definitely gets very cold. But what, what people don't understand is it gets really hot here, too. A lot of people think, um, like the story I told the other um, what was it last week or the other day? <laughs> The other day during the live, I told the story about when I got locked up down in North Carolina. And um, when I got locked up down in North Carolina, they all were like, what do you mean it gets like 90, 100 degrees in Chicago? It's like they thought that it's only cold here, <laughs> you know, like we're in Siberia or something. It's like, no, we get all the seasons. You know, we get winter, spring, fall. Now, some of them are really short. You know, and it just hurries up and goes right into whatever. Um, and it is kind of a the seasons are really weird. When I was young, it seasons were exactly that, like um scheduled. It was like, you know, you actually had a season. Now they're kind of mixed up, but still summertime, it'll get I've been outside, man, and it's been 110 degrees outside on the job site, and then you're working down inside of a hole that's 10, 12 feet deep with no wind. <laughs> or up on a roof or even worse in an attic oh my goodness me and Carol will be walking and she'll be like aren't you hot and my baby when i think of hot i think of 120 degrees in a no wind attic <laughs> that's what when i think of hot um we get all four seasons in one freaking day um yeah shout out to florida florida it's uh awesome because well i don't know about awesome but it gets uh it'll be dry and then all of a sudden bam it'll rain for 10 minutes and then all of a sudden it'll get super humid for you know a couple hours then all of a sudden it'll get nice and then bam you'll get that shower again i don't know if it's good yeah attic work is the best right that is the best work um you can't even breathe just going up in like an an attic where like there's no it, I, there's no um central air in the house or you know like maybe it's not finished or maybe it is finished who knows but whatever there's there's no um there's no cool air in the house at all and then you get up to an attic where there's no wind just crossing the border getting your head up in there you can just feel the oxygen like suck you dry because it's the heat it's oh man You'll literally, like, as you're going up into the attic, sweat will start beating from the part that's in the attic, <laughs> just dripping down your face. Um, please, work in a seal coat manufacturing plant in the summer. You'll beg for an attic. Well, I've done seal coating. Um, I haven't worked in a seal coating plant, but I've, I've definitely done my fair share of seal coating. But um, I think we're, we can all argue, like, what the issues are. It's just like right now I can talk about, you know, doing roofing in the middle of, you know, well, it's 110 degrees outside and there's no trees. No possible way for you to get away from the sun, which is just baking you. Your your shoes are melting to the surface. Like, I've, I've down in a hole, like... um. When a backhoe digs a hole out and you got, you know, whether it's 12 foot, 15 foot, and you're down there and it's 110 degrees outside down there, you can bring a temperature gun down there and it'll be well above 120 and you're down there and there's no air, no air at all. Like there's no wind. That's what I mean. There's air, no wind, but yeah, bad, bad. 
Um, what can even be even worse? Yeah, ask Mike Rowe. <laughs> Shout out to Dirty Jobs. Um, another one that can be really bad is when it's cold in the winter when you're like trying to do concrete or something. Um, I, I was in a hole one time where it um it kept snowing. So we had to get the water out of the hole. So we'd have to lay blankets down to melt the ice and the snow to pump it out. Right. Our walls were collapsing. So literally now we're digging this thing out. We can't bring a machine down there. So we got to dig this whole thing out by hand after already digging it out by hand because oh, it was a disaster. I don't even want to talk about that job. Holy shit. Um, that's what I do. Maintenance in a seal coat plant. Everything has to be hot to make the sealer. And with the addition of Illinois summer heat and the humidity, it's ridiculous. I bet. Yep. I bet. All right. So I want to speak about something, but I can't show you guys it. I see we got people coming in here. I know there's a couple other lives going right now. So some people aren't going to be in here probably as many as usual, but the the Vosteed knives are coming in. I'm just gonna say that the Vosteed knives are coming in. Now I might have one of them, but I can't show you guys it. But as soon as the day comes that I can show you guys, which isn't just a couple days, let me just say, it is badass. It is far better than the budget versions. They definitely did things different. It, it's nowhere near the same. Like there's so many little details that are uh, different about it. Um, I, you guys are just gonna have to wait to see. But fucking awesome, Patrick! Thank you for the donation. Five bones. Hope all is well, Jared. Hope all your peeps are good. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate it, man. Did I see somebody else donated? Yes. Bang bang. Thank you for the donation. Just saw MC live too. Crazy love, my home here. You know what? Speaking of MC, shout out to Nick Shabazz. Anybody who's friends with Nick Shabazz, tell him I said uh, shout out to him. He went and trolled good old MC for me. And uh, I, I didn't ask him to, by the way. I did not ask him to do this, but he went to old MC and told him, Eve's Knives is coming for you. And uh, that is hilarious. I love it. <laughs> yes, I am. So, uh, yeah. Shout out to Nick Shabazz going and trolling my arch nemesis metal complex. I work in a warehouse in Acola, Florida. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That here, that has no AC, just exhaust and regular fan in the summer. is pretty wicked. Yeah, I bet. I bet. For sure. Fuck. Brass Brigade. Shout out to Brass Brigade. We got the gripper right here. Now, I heard there might be, uh, or there is, some extra versions coming out. You guys should go and check out his Instagram for the information. Or, um, yeah, I guess talk to him right here if you want. But he, there were, I, I forget the amount. I think it was 30 more. I forget. I don't want to quote it and be wrong, but there were some more of this version right here. Now, I know there were some coded ones, but I think those ones sold out, and now there's some extra ones of these, so communicate with them if you're wanting to get one of those. Talica! I'm staying nice and warm and stylish. Yeah, we were just talking about the jacket, actually. I've been asked so many times about that jacket, so many times. Um, but it is, it is really nice. It's one of my favorite jackets. I love it. Um, what is your first knife? Um, shout out to the bang gang squad, by the way, I was just saying tomorrow we got a live at 12 o'clock noon central time. I'm going to go live for probably an hour. I got some things written down that I want to go over and it's going to be our first live for the membership program. Now, anybody's going to be able to watch it. I'm not going to do that forever. I'm just going to do um, so many of those like that so that people know that it exists and can, you know, sign up if they want to. My first knife was, I don't remember the brand, but it was basically, it was like a buck 110, but bigger. I was like five, six years old. My dad gave me my first pocket knife. It was massive. It was so big. 
Um, I had like, I could barely open it. Um, but it, I remember I used to put it in my back pocket and it didn't even fit. It was so big. Uh, but yeah, that was my first knife. Um, that was mine. Now, where the fuck is my book? All right. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this. Jason Brown. <clears throat> Love all you dummies. Thank you, Jason. I do appreciate the five bones. Love you back, brother. Thank you, man. I do appreciate everybody who donates to the channel. You guys have no idea how much donations massively help the channel. And there's just so many expenses. So in order to keep it going and keep everything rolling and fun, it, it, it is a lot. Uh, but you guys definitely help that um stay rolling all right so first thing i want to talk about um johnny rum i love the name shout out to johnny rum thanks for all the vids brother great channel keep on doing your thing thank you johnny thank you for the five bones man i appreciate it um so magna cut I want to hurry up and talk about this really quick. So I recently sharpened some of BGM knives as mag Magna Cut. And, you know, there has been a thing going around with BGM knives, running it a little soft. And, yeah, it is. It is definitely soft. But BGM knives has already addressed it. So he is. And I talked to him. Um, I did message him. Um, he. Uh, I also messaged um, Erica from not your average EDC because she was, you know, kind of talking about it and shining some light on it. And, you know, I didn't know if it was true or not. Um, the way I look at it is, you know, it's a new steel. Lots of companies are going to be using it. Some companies are going to be doing it right. Some companies are not companies are going to need feedback and eventually they'll figure out the process. Either the companies are going to continue to want to work with it and want to do it right, or they're not going to. Right. Um, I guess what we're finding out right now is that Magna Cut is not very good at 61, 61.5 HRC and below. It's just not. How did it feel to me? So one, I noticed it right away on the stone. Like I hit the stone. I, I instantly, because it was Talica's knife, I instantly messaged Talica and said, yeah, it's soft. Uh, because I had already sharpened one at 64 HRC, so I had felt the difference. Now, obviously, 64 and 61 HRC is a big difference, a massive difference. So no matter what, there should be a, a difference. But I, I could tell right away, just hitting the stone on the diamonds. Now, I thought, like, okay, this is, this is an aggressive diamond stone. You know, maybe I'm jumping to conclusion. So I did want to finish sharpening before I really – gave you know my my opinion on it so that's what i told him i said you know let me go through the stones and see how it feels right but right away like i said it did feel soft i did notice a huge difference because if you guys remember my magnica video i explained that on the stone i could tell it was hard like i could feel that the steel is incredibly hard and i don't mean hard to sharpen i mean it feels hard on the stone it didn't feel like that it, it the way I'd like to even almost um, like to translate it into another steel, which I'm not saying it's like this steel at all. Not at all. I'm just saying like to translate it, it kind of felt like, like CPM 154. Um, and anyway, so going through the stones, I wound up getting to my last stone and I noticed it was not taking a lot of bite. It, it was slick, glassy similar to like CPM 154. Remember, I'm not saying it's like CPM 154. I'm just trying to get your guys' mindset of like the feeling and what, how I felt um, sharpening it. CPM 154 gets very glassy when you go through um, high grits. Hell, it, CPM 154 gets glassy after like 600 grit. 154 CM is a little bit better, but a CPM 154 is just a little too fine grained and it gets very slick. Anyway, so that's how the Magna Cut felt. Well, I wasn't happy with it. I wasn't happy, so I wanted to jump back at it. So I said, I'm just going to redo it all over again. I'm going to redo it all over again. And I'm going to attack it a little bit different. So I went back at it at um, a little bit of a lower angle and um, just a little bit. So I went from... Um, 15 degrees per side and I switched it to 13 degrees per side. Also, when I originally did it, I did it with a convex edge. Why did I do a convex edge? I just felt like it. Um, one, it, it, it was a, um, a chisel grind. So the chisel grind, 
I'm doing a really big bevel on one side, you know. So also there was a micro bevel on the opposite side of the chisel grind. There's always going to be a tiny, 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 tiny micro bevel, but it was a little bit of a larger micro bevel. Anyways, still a micro bevel though. So I said, all right, I'm going to eat that thing away. I'm going to remove that steel and I'm going to lay it back a little bit further. And I'm going to do a V grind instead of a convex. Um, the convex looked beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, but it was just glassy. Um, so went back at it. V ground edge removed more steel, hoping to maybe get into some better steel, which I know that almost doesn't make sense when you were talking about a, a custom heat treat and everything. but. Either way, now when I finished with the V grind, removing the rest of the micro bevel or the, you know, the, a portion of the micro bevel and laying it back to 13 degrees, it did get some bite. So I increased the bite with the V grind and, and by removing that little tiny micro bevel and by lowering the angle a little bit more, not to the extent that I would imagine it should be, not to the extent that I think if it was 64 HRC or even 63 HRC, where it would be. I think it would be have a massive amount of bite more, but it still has bite now. So I, I'm, you know, a lot happier with it than I was, but it does go to show that I don't think Magna Cut's going to be very good at um, anything under 63 HRC. That's kind of what my mind is saying right now. So if it's below 63, I'm thinking it's not going to be the best for all applications possibly for fixed blades but definitely not for folders now that was a fixed blade by the way so just right off the bat that's a fixed blade i can easily put a toothy edge on there and create bite myself but um for folders especially um i i think 64 hrc is where we're going to want to be now remember it's 65 hrc the toughness goes down to um vanex basically the same toughness as vanex which is not bad that, pff, i'm happy with it I, I don't see any problem with vanex's toughness level so you know just to give you um a thought process on how high and low the toughness is with uh magna cut when you raise the hrc because remember the higher the hrc the lower the toughness but the longer the edge is going to last but also the possibilities of chipping goes higher, right? Not saying it's going to be chippy. I'm saying the higher you go, the possibilities. Um, now, uh, I still want to see a freestyle hand sharpening competition between a bunch of content creators. I would fucking free hand sharpen against anybody. I, I wouldn't give a shit. Like I, I'm very confident in my abilities to hand sharpen. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Um, the thing is, is that the one problem with like, well, I don't know. I guess it depends on how you do the competition. Like if you did it live or something, um, the problem with it be is some people would be faster and slower than others. It depends. On, like if everybody would have to have almost the same knife, I mean, I guess they wouldn't have to, but nobody's going to want to pick, like, say if I have something that's thick behind the edge, right. And you have something thin behind the edge, you're going to sharpen way faster than I am. That's just the way it goes. Um, also, um, some people take more time than others. And especially like me, when I do my best work, I take my time. Like I am not rushing for nothing. Um, but yeah, I would have no problem with that. Uh, Q and Fiend says, my challenge to the chat, I'll match the next donation. Let's support this great channel. Oh, dude, you're amazing, man. Thank you so much. Watch, we're not going to get one. <laughs> <laughs> no donations. Jesus is Alpha Omega. I want that large folding dagger knives button with a liner. Oh, you mean the parrot? Yeah, it's a beast. It is a the lights a little. There we go. Right there. It is definitely a beast. Yeah, that's kind of the beauty of this. It's not like a conventional button like, hey. Shepherd 214, thank you for the 10 bones. Love your vids. I'm a knife maker who loves chunky overbuilt blades when sharpening. Do you think, wait, when sharpening, do you think for EDC a, a low slicey angle is better 
or a higher, more durable angle is best. Mine are usually convex. I think a lower angle is almost always going to be best for folders. Um, it does depend on the knife and its intentions and thinness behind the edge. But if we're talking about something chunky, then it's already thick behind the edge. So you're going to want to lower the angle to increase the performance of cutting and edge retention. You know, with the low angles, yes, the edge is going to be tough, but what are you doing with your folder that your edge needs to be that tough? You're wanting cutting performance. So, and then also it's going to go duller faster. You're going to lose edge retention, you know, and it's going to increase toughness for sure, but you're going to decrease your cutting performance. I would way rather have that cutting performance. Now I do understand there's still a line. There's a level right there. Like, it's not like you want to go down like eight degrees per side or something. And I mean, not saying you might not want to, but you might not want to, and you might want to create a balance where you get it nice and slicey, yet it's also not fragile. So I do think there's a balance and convexing can help with that, especially if you're going to do a very low angle. If you're going to do a very low angle, convexing it will increase the toughness so that it might not be, it might not have as much bite to it. Um, in some cases, now I'm not saying convex, I just can't have a ton of bite. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that the toughness goes up. The level of sharpness can go down, right? And, but that might be the happy balance that you might want. So it just does depend. Uh, but I personally, I like everything, you know, I just think it depends on the application of the knife, but I, I do like a little bit of everything. Sometimes I like convex. Sometimes I like V grind. Sometimes I like high angles. Sometimes I like low angles, uh, but something, I'm something big and chunky. I would definitely want a low angle. Um, Rod Geronimo with the 10 bones. Thank you, man. Number one fan. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Q1 Fiend, another donation. A deal's a deal, Shepard. Thank you, guys. Rod, Fiend, Shepard, thank you. You guys are all amazing, man. Thank you so much. Like I said, donations massively help the channel in a huge way. Thank you so much. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, even And also, I do want to thank everybody who uses my links. It massively helps when you guys use my links. I appreciate everybody who contacts me and gives me time to 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 answer them when they they ask me, "Hey, man, you got a link for this or you got a link for that?" I appreciate it because using my links does help. It is a small percentage, but that with all of them, you know, every every time somebody uses them, it goes up. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'd love to see that BGM Magna Cuts Edge. Wait, I'd love to see that BGM Magna Cuts Edge live if it's around to grab. Yeah, let me grab it. So um, quick commercial break. Bing, bing, bing. Let's check out this fanatic edge first. I know we're talking about Magna Cup, but first, um, I did earlier on an Instagram post. I talked about getting oh man, I should have grabbed them. The slim stones. If you want the good veneer finish edges with your fixed angled system or freehand, get the thin veneer stones. They're like 0 0.6, 0 0.5 of an inch. You can get them in uh I think different lengths, mine are six inches, but that's how I did the fanatic edge. Let's uh, do a little zoomage. Hold on. Now, the only problem with this is they did a horrible plunge grind on this knife, but here is. Ooh, ooh, you guys ready to see 13 degrees per side or not per side 13 degrees here is a 13 degree edge bevel look at that big daddy look at how big that edge bevel is it's that is sexy ain't it yes that is a free hand edge and now it does have a good level of bite 
did take me some work to get to it, but it is a good amount of bite now. That is a beauty. And then the other side is a chisel grind. So we have a chisel. It has a tiny, tiny, you have to knock off the burr, right? So in order to knock off the burr, the way I remove the burrs, I just used a ceramic rod. I just hit a ceramic rod on it. Now, I, um, I did wind up using the stone too, but, um, but yeah, very nice. Uh, I, you know, what sucks is fresh edges. And then you put it back in the sheath. It's like, Ooh, don't fuck my edge up. Oh, going there nice and easy now. Nice and easy. Don't be tapping the, the sheath too much. Um, what do you think of the weak hyphen? I like it. I have it. It is slim. Um, it's a, it's a small knife. It's kind of like, if you like the elementum, then you probably like the, no, I'm not gonna say you for sure are because it's slimmer. So it's kind of like a slimmer, slicier elementum in a way. Um, a little bit more of a fragile tip. The one beauty of the elementum is it has more of a spear point. So it has a nice acute tip, but that's also not fragile. The kyphen has a little bit more of a fragile tip, but yeah, it, it's a good knife. There's nothing like extravagant about it, right? But that's kind of the beauty of it. Right, kind of like some of Ray Laconico's knives, where it's simple, it's easy, but that's kind of the beauty of it. It's a good knife, nice deep hollow grind, beautiful plunge grind, beautiful choil. Um, you know, flipping action is good, ball bearings, solid knife, and we does a good job. I would love to see. Oh yeah, I already. Wait, I I would love to see that button. Oh, I already showed that one. Okay, sorry. Do you like knives? Do you? Do you even knife, bro? Luke Cole! Thank you, Luke. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Holy shit, you guys are amazing. Thank you for all the donations tonight. Again, with the uh, button lock really quick, because I, I only showed it really quick. The beauty of this um, is that it's kind of like the Spyderco smock, where it's a liner lock in there, and the button is just attached to the liner. Now, the thing with this is this is, Almost 11 inches. This is 10.75 inches, which can make the flipping action a little weird because you, you can't really go like this because what it does is look at my hand. It pushes it down my palm. So, and I can't go like this and reach the flipper tab because it's so big. So I have to turn it sideways so that when I pull down, it kind of creates tension against the side of my palm and I'm squeezing it like this, which works great. Don't get me wrong. It works great. Um, it's just, it's, you're not, you're not flipping it the conventional way. Now you always could just push the button and swing it, but it makes it where this lockup is super solid. You're not going to have that, uh, that button lock problem that other button lock knives have at all. You won't have that. You won't have the the lock rock or blade play issues or blade rock issues. You just won't left-handed. Um, so, and I do feel this thing breaking in a little bit where the flipping action is getting better. And I guess I'm adapting to it a little bit more, just like any knife. Um, but, but yeah, you're never going to have those issues. Not saying you can't get lock rock, right? If you start cranking on it, but I'm saying it doesn't have the same type of spring that a conventional button lock has that that gets spongy or gets softer and then you gotta take it out and you gotta stretch it or whatever it doesn't have that it's a liner lock it's a fucking liner lock just with a button on it again luke thank you so much for the donation man um there's your commercial bang bang more commercials to come sexiness yes sir yes sir yeah, it is screaming sharp. It is. And I don't, that's why I don't want, I hate talking in certain ways because I remember at one time when I would listen to reviewers or listen to, to people talk, I would take things as absolute almost in a way where like, say if somebody said, um, oh, the detent's a little soft. 
It's a soft detent. It's got a soft detent, not realizing like that compared to what, all right? A soft detent, like it's on the softer side, but does it flip reliably? And it's like, and then if I get it in hand, it's like, that's way better than I thought it was going to be, right? Um, well, same thing like with that, you know, I, I'm i saying the steel is soft. Is it bad? No, it's not like bad. But I do think, though, that um, it, it could, like, like I said, after sharpening the, the 64 HRC and sharpening that, it, you can tell the level of sh the level of not only sharpness, but also how hard the steel steel feels and how um how hard it feels on the stone. Like just everything about it, you can feel. But yeah, 13 degrees hot. Damn. Um. How's it going, Spanky? How's it going? Shout out to the Bang Gang Squad. Spooge. Thank you, Talica. Thank you for the donation, brother. Um, I want a BGM, but I'm a hold off until John deals. He's already dealing with it. You ain't even got to worry about it. Go ahead, buy one. He's already dealt with it. Um, I talked to him. He's not he's not gonna run them um at that HRC no more. He's already addressed it. All of them are gonna be higher now. So if you get one. You, he's going to raise it. So no issues at all. Um, I didn't even want to tell him. I didn't even want to tell him because I already knew he's addressing it. And I knew me telling him was just beating a dead horse. He already knows, right? You know, it's kind of like with anything, you know, like if, if some, if five people, 10 people already came and told me about something and I'm like, okay, I'll deal with it. Well then 15 more come and tell me it's like, all right, guys, I already said, it. I, I, okay. You know, that's the way he, that's what how he's dealing. He's it's done. It's already dealt with. Um uh, it's almost a scandy grind. Yeah, 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 buddy. But you know, scandy grinds, man. Whew. I have felt some scandy grinds that were so scary sharp. Like you man, so there's some scandy grinds out there that it's like holy shit, because it's like a zero grind. So how many parts? To your knife collection, do you think you that's the problem? Probably like see, okay. So I've done two. Uh, I have to make sure I'm careful with my collection right now because I have everything separated to where I can do them in parts. I'm not gonna be able to record them all at once. Um, but what I'm gonna do is the the probably the next probably like Five more, maybe six more. Up, no, I got two more, three more cases. Probably eight more episodes, maybe. I know it sucks. So what I'm probably gonna do, I don't want to have to do that. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna like boil them down into like five, but go fast. Like I'm not. That's the problem. It's either it's gonna be good quality or it's gonna be like this. Like think about it. There's just too many. Like I have a lot of knives, and a lot. Remember. By, by the way, everybody who's a patron member, as soon as I'm done with this uh, video for, for my collection update, there's going to be a huge knife sale. Knight, patron members are going to be the first ones to have dibs. Then it goes to the community or, you know, to the public. But if I want to talk about the knives at all, you know, in the collection, then it's going to take, you know, probably eight more episodes without them being an hour a piece. And that's with them being probably 20 minutes a piece. Now, if I want to, I can get them down to probably four or five episodes, but it's going to be like this. Kaiser bag lighter and fat carbon fiber and 20 CV. Civivi, Keen Natter. Uh, what steel is this? Nitro V? No, N690 in my card, right? It's going to be fast. That's how I always did my, my knife collection videos because I wanted to always do my knife collection videos in one video. I don't like breaking them up into episodes. I honestly don't like doing that. I like just doing it in one. That way, when I want to look at my knife collection in the future or something like that, or anybody wants to know what's in my knife collection, they don't have to watch 10 episodes. They can watch one video. It's difficult though, man, because if I do it this time, it's going to be an hour long, probably more. And that's if I go fast. That's if I'm like Kaiser bag letter, Ka Kaiser sheepdog, CV Keen Natter, right? That sucks. I don't want to do that. So I'm probably going to speed it up a little bit. 
but still be able to talk about it and boil it down to probably six, seven episodes. Um. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know what you mean. I can't wait till they drop the Asher knives with the hole. Also, I love that he's using a different OEM, um, which the, the other OEM is a really good OEM. So I'm happy about that. Um, hi, Jared. What do you think about the, the Graham BO knives? I don't know what those are. I'm sorry. Uh, have I seen them? I, I can't remember. Just bought a wee a spree. Now I want the upshot. Yeah, both of them are good. Both of them are good. Both of them are solid knives. What I like about those in-house wee knives, well, I guess this spree is not an in-house. That's a, a Ray Laconico. But what's cool about them is they are simple, useful knives. There's so many knives out there that are you can grab for anything right it's kind of like right here like this knife right here the subjugator this is a knife i can grab and know i have a good knife right i got good puncturing tip right i got a decent amount of belly i got um you know uh good ergos i uh, good action i you know i just i have a good solid knife here that will work for whatever i need and that is kind of a beautiful thing where I don't, it doesn't matter what I run into. I can handle it with a knife like this. And I like that about those knives, like the Esprit and the Upshot. Same thing with the Beacon, right? It's a knife that I could, you know, use for just about anything and be okay. Are there other knives that would work better? Possibly, just depending on what the task is, but I could do it without having issues. Like it will do it good. I like knives like that. Those are my favorite kind of knives. And those are my most carried kind of knives. Um, Brian Teal says, I would love to see that button lock liner on a, oh wait, I would love to see that button liner lock on a lot more knives as my hands are beginning to fail me. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know about this one. Yeah. Maybe if your hands are beginning to fail you, this probably is not the one for you because, it's got a very strong detent. This one, like I said, it's just a big knife. If it was this big, you know, like just a regular seven and a half, eight inch knife, it'd be great, which it's still great the way it is. But like I said, it's just hard to get to that flipper tab because it's so far away from the bottom of the knife. So when you, with the, such a strong detent, it pushes down your hand. So you got to grip it a certain way to get that, that flipping action going or use the button. But yeah, I do agree though, especially if you're talking about using the button to swing it out because it can, it can, you know, you can just use the button to swing it and it locks up so strong and so solid like the smock. But yeah, I agree. I wanted, I would way rather see button locks like that than the conventional button locks because that would, would, be way harder to fail and everything else I'm not saying button locks fail easily but the spring is just different right the lock face geometry is different some companies have button lock geometry down pat and other companies they have it good but just not great with a liner lock most companies can do a like it's kind of like um what um what my guest the other day said right he was talking about, you know, because he makes knives. He said that a liner lock is way more forgiving than a, um, than other locks, right? Like than uh, an access lock, meaning you have room to like if your scales aren't perfect and things don't line up perfect, a liner lock is more forgiving, it, you know. So. That is kind of a more of a beautiful thing. A plunge lock on a button lock at the tolerances and everything's not perfect. It's not going, it's, you're going to get blade rock. You're going to get those little issues. Patrick Fitzgerald says, my care, my carry most days is a 940 or a pair of three. I've been looking hard at the Spidey Chef. Do you have any opinions or alternatives? The corrosion resistance is part of that appealing to me. Well, the quiet carry, um, the quiet carry knives, any of those. Um, if you like the Spidey Chef, the Spidey Chef's great. I, I would say, yeah, but alternatives. 
Yeah, I would go, uh, you know, quiet carry knives, the tactile knives, um, because they use the Magna Cut and they use the 20 CV. They also use CTS XHP. Um, Magna Cut is probably going to be your best bet right now. Um, so yeah, the, the, the tactile knives, um, but it's different than what you're, what you're thinking of. I was just thinking of the steel with the stainlessness. Uh, but yeah, if you, uh, if you like the 940, then you will most likely like the quiet carry waypoint. Um, this knife right here. A completely rust proof knife. This is a great knife. Corrosion proof, really good. Solid choice. Um, but 20 CV, 20 CV is very stainless. The beacon, the wee beacon. This is a fantastic knife. I love this knife. Same thing with the subjugator. The other one I just pulled up a second ago, or it's in my pocket. <laughs> These are great choices. Titanium, ceramic bearings. Um, it's a very corrosion-proof knife right here. Very, very. 20 CV is very corrosion-proof. Not quite like Magna Cut, but still very good. And it's got a nice satin finish on it. Now, the, the beacon is more of a bead blast. So I would say go with the subjugator. Um, it's uh, going to be a little bit more corrosion-resistant. I got my bug out nice and smooth now. Thanks, man. Also, have you checked out Tom McDonald's and Adam Calhoun's new album? I got it. I uh, haven't listened yet. Don't mean to get off topic. I haven't listened to it yet either, but I do have it. Um, I wound up getting a second one. Uh, not a second one of that one, but the, the, the other one from, I don't know how, but for some reason, I got the, the Adam Calhoun and uh, Tom McDonald's. Tom McDonald's to CD, and then they he wound up sending me one of his own CDs too. Um, that was just a Tom McDonald one, which I thought was weird. I didn't order it for sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is a face reveal. I don't know what to do with this. I'm used to hands on knives. Thanks, Mike. Yes, uh, all lives are face reveals on Neve's knives. Neve's knives lives are always face reveals. I like I like to get nice and personal with you guys, you know talk knives, talk personal stuff. We usually do story time at nine o'clock, although I didn't write one down. So we might need a little help with that. Terry T-Rex, our T-Rex in the bang gang squad. Y'all hit that like button. Thank you, Terry. I do appreciate it. Yes, I would love it if you guys could hit the like button. It definitely helps me with the algorithm. It helps people helps the algorithm know that it's a good video and people enjoy it and then they'll show it to other people. So thank you for that. If you guys are hitting the like button, do you think reviewers should ask for two knives just so that they can verify what a standard, what is standard in a knife build and what is a one off flaw or gem? What do you mean? Do you mean, uh, knife reviewers from companies like should they, should they ask for two knives from a company that's sending them a knife anyways um i don't know uh, i don't know that's tough because i think some of the issue is is they're trying to do the cost ratio as low as possible by sending you know a few knives to a few reviewers um now if you are a reviewer like me personally and they send me a knife with a flaw i'll expose the flaw and say the flaw but i'll try to teach you how to fix it so i don't necessarily think it's such, always such a bad thing when i get one with a flaw now because the the fact is right is that if i got it other people are going to get it so I, I don't mind getting the flaw because then I can help you guys figure out how to fix it without sending it back. Now, admittedly, most of the time I would just recommend sending it back. But I know a lot of you guys are knuckleheads like me and you don't want to send it back. Right? You just want to say, I want to fix it myself. And sometimes it's such an easy fix that it'd be dumb for you to send it back. There are some fixes and sometimes I do think it's, some things are ridiculous to send back. You know, it's like, dude, if you knew how easy that was to, to fix, like, you wouldn't have sent it back. But some things, yes, I would just say, don't even mess with that. Just send it back. They'll send you a new one, you know. But 
in a lot of cases, you know, you're stubborn and you're just like, man, I don't, I just waited five days for this or however long for this knife. I don't want to send it back. You know, I want to fix this issue. Tri-State EDC, shout out to Tri-State EDC. Go and follow his awesome YouTube channel. Um, he actually recently just did an unboxing of some knives from Mike Emler. Um, I seen he had that, uh, oh man, what's the name of it? The, um, the Miguron, uh, the Miguron knife, uh, that I gave to Mike. That's an awesome knife. And we're going to talk about the DC 53 steel here in just a second. Um, the Valona. The Valona, yes, the the Migaron Valona with the with the um the DC fifty three steel, which is basically like a souped up D two, and it really is like a souped up D two. It, it's pretty crazy. That's some good steel. I kind of like it. Um, Lookout says, Neve, I gotta leave. Folding knives don't excite me anymore. Everything I buy is under four inch fixed blades. Well, we do we do fixed blades over here too. But uh, but hey, hey man, if it's not exciting you, then uh, then yeah, leave it behind. Go go find some of the uh, the the fixed blade channels. There's a lot of them. There's a huge fixed blade community. You know who really loves fixed blades? Uh, Lookout is um. And if you really want to get deep with fixed blades, is um, knife junkie, knife junkie man, Bob Demarco man. He is deep into fixed blades. He loves them fixed blades. I do have some more fixed blades coming. I just did some USA made knives fixed blades that I'm very sad about because my, my, uh, my editing app, app messed up, um, a bunch of videos that I had already recorded for my review. So that, that review, man, sometimes just shit happens, but when it does, man, it sucks because I already had the knives for so long. And what do you think about the workshop precision sharpener for a beginner? I think it's the it's my most recommended sharpening system for a beginner. Um, I think one other one you definitely want to get is uh, the the field sharpener, the work sharp field sharpener. Get that, and you if you have because you can practice and learn how to freehand. But with watch my videos on it, Dave. Dave, I got multiple videos on it, and the one in particular you're going to want to watch. You're going to want to watch my attachments video i have three three so not just one so if you see just one video just know there's probably there's two more that could be better but i have the work sharp field guided sharpener the precision guided sharp sorry not field the precision guided sharpener system with aftermarket attachments so one of them has like 10 different attachments that you can get which make that system way better and there's two attachments that i highly recommend that i think is a must if you want to turn that system into a, a superior system you're going to want to get the stone holder and and i recommend the the 3d printed one so if you watch my uh, my video on uh, the Gridomatic one, go find the 3D printed attachment one that I did a video on. I recommend that one. There's less movement in it. And he's got it where you can get four inch stones or six inch stones in the same attachment. And then the base, the base, it's a little uh, prop that goes up underneath the clamp and it stops the clamp from moving. Now you can cut out a piece of wood if you want to, but it's adjustable. Anyways, my point is, is that that gives you the ability to put any stone in that system. So if you want an Atoma plate, if you want a Venive stone, if you want, name that stone, right? You can put it in there. So now you just turn that system into like a KME, right? Um, so watch that video. And also I recommend you become a member of the bang gang squad where we teach sharpening, um, twice a month. And also I'm going to be uploading other videos and stuff for the bang gang squad, which is the membership program that I started so that I can help people learn sharpening. Seems logical says Scandi knives are an e are easy to resharpen strap, but a bitch to reprofile. Ain't that the truth? Uh, don't mess up your edge is what I learned on Scandi knives. Yeah, you can you you can do them on sandpaper and stuff. There's ways to do them, but yeah, anytime you reprofile anything with a very low angle, it's a bitch because you're doing more steel, right? It's just 
more steel, right? It's kind of like if you thought about sanding down a table, right? Is it easier for you to sand down the corner of the table or the whole damn table, right? <laughs> That's the way it is. Can't believe how well the Wii Subjugator flips, sounds, and cuts, plus skiffs. So nice. You know what? I didn't even think about that. I got my Gillians. I might actually put some Gillians in my Subjugator. I love the Subjugator. I actually, forgive me, guys. I do have the video still coming against these two. The Subjugator and the Wii Beacon. The Wii Beacon and the Wii Subjugator. 20, they're, all, they're both the same materials, 20 CV and titanium. Um, both are great, but they're very different knives. So I have that video coming where um, I've been testing the hell out of them, man. I've been carrying the hell out of them. So by the time I do do the video, by the time I do do the video, it, it's going to be uh, well thought out, which is coming soon, guys. It's coming soon. Now, I can't link this right now. Um, I want to be able just to throw it in the chat. But I can't because that's way too many. Um, so I have, let me see if I can just toss it in this video really quick. I don't think I can. Um, it won't go until I get done doing this live right now. But what I want to do is um, put this link in the chat. And I might just do one by one, but I have a whole bunch of links I want you guys to check out. Now, one of them is for the gunny juice. So let me just grab it really quick for you some bitches. And uh, because for the Bang Gang Squad members and anybody else, right? Gunny juice. Get some damn gunny juice. This is going to be the best dropping compound you've ever used. It is diamond based, so it works on every steel. And it's highly effective. I recommend if you're only going to get one, which I do recommend getting, you know, multiples. But if you're only going to get one, get the six, the six micron. That's the one I recommend. And it is highly effective. Now, also, this particular strop, this strop is a really good strop. And it's going to tomorrow morning, afternoon, when we do the live for the Bang Gang Squad members, we are going to go deep into um, main, main maintenance, edge maintenance, because, you know, it's one thing knowing how to sharpen. We might also go into work sharp, precision guided sharpeners, uh, because I know a lot of you guys have that. So I do want to talk about that a little bit. But I want to talk about uh, straps, compounds, honing, and edge maintenance. But you guys do need to get if you guys don't have this strop and this compound, that's fine. But this is very effective, and I think you will see a lot better results if you did have it. That's all I'm saying. And I'm going to right now, I'm going to link it, and I'm going to throw it in the chat really quick. And this link does benefit the channel. So if any of you guys do use it, it does benefit the channel. Um, It is right here somewhere. Here it is. I'm going to put both of them in, okay? I The strop, the reason why I recommend that strop with that compound is because the, it, it, um, it spreads really easily and it, like, watch this. I'll show you guys really quick. Strop it up. Now watch, see this leather? It's dry. I'm going to put a little dab or do on her. A little dab or do. See, a little dab or do. Spread it out. Now watch how fast that dries. I'll just hold it. Watch how fast that dries. It'll be dry before I can even put this fucker in the chat. It's already dry. See that? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so I put both the links in the chat. Now that's the point. It is so easy to use. And it's hyper effective. So one of the problems with some of the liquid diamond compounds is how ridiculously long they take to dry and how hard they are to like put on and everything. This is the easiest compounds I've ever used. And it is so effective. The diamond, the grain and the diamonds are so fine that it, it's, um, how can I put it? It's, it's very, very fine grain. So basically just the amount of diamond in each one is going to be the difference between how aggressive it is and how fine it is. The six micron, that's like, I think like 4,000 grit or something. So that's going to help be, or it's going to be very good for maintenance. Like meaning you've used your knife for the day and now you just want to tune it up, 
right? You strop it and bring your edge back. That's edge maintenance. And then fresh off the stone, you had a mirror edge. This will work great for a mirror edge. You know, um, is it after like 2000 grit, a mirror edge starts. So this is like 4,500 grit or something like that. So it's plenty for that. Now, if you want to get like super mirror polished and yeah, get one micron or 0.25 micron, but six is great for both. That's why I recommend six the most. Now, it's so easy to use and you can see it working. A lot of compounds, you're like, is this working? This stuff you absolutely see working. So I recommend it. Now, if you have like two or three, like if you have the six, uh, the three and the one, you can make a mirror edge. Now, whether or not that's sharp is another story, but you can make it mirror. Especially if you have the nine. If you have the nine, the six and the three, you can make a mirror edge, uh, but uh, or at least make it very, very shiny. Is there a social media page that covers blade stock looking to pick up an areas? I don't understand what you mean. Um, I would just go on uh, their social media on their Instagram and talk to them and um, keep up with them. That's what I would do. Keeping up with the community keeping up with Instagram, constantly checking their social media pages. But if somebody else knows something, uh, let them know. How's your stomach from last night? I'm guessing that's the cue ball. Yeah, cue ball. How's your stomach last night or right now from last night? Throughout the knife collection vids, he's going to toss the ones he doesn't like anymore into a box. There will be the... <laughs> yes, Ed. Yes, Ed. That is exactly how it's going to go. Whatever knives I don't like are just they're go that's what you guys are gonna get. The shittiest ones will be the giveaway knives, and the bad ones will be the for sale knives. No, I'll be honest, I'm definitely gonna keep a lot of my knife collection, a lot of my 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 big hitters, but no, I, I got a lot because I can't keep them all. I can't keep them all. There's just too many. And in order for me to keep reinvesting into this channel, I have to sell knives I love. Um, now that doesn't mean I'm not gonna I'm gonna sell the ones I you know I love the most, but I am gonna sell a lot of knives that I do love a lot, like some I do not want to sell. Um, if you want snapshot of your knife collection, you can always put them in and spreadsheet. That's what I do. Um, well, I want to um show them so I'm, I'm gonna do like a video kind of like um like uh like kind of how uh ltk does with his knife sales something like that because i know people are going to want to see them probably and see how they are now versus how they probably were on the channel when i first showed them but um i might even do it in like two videos or something i don't know meaning for the knife sale, but either way, or no, I'll just do it in one. I'm going to do it in one video because what I want to be able to do is whoever doesn't buy anything, the patron members, whatever they don't buy, I'm just going to upload the exact same video and allow the public to see it. Um, You can make as many Neves knife knife collection videos as you care to. I doubt anyone is going to complain. It will be epic. I don't think people will complain. I think the problem is it's like, I like a lot of times people just want to see like your knife collection, um, the entirety of it. And when it takes you a week and a half to show the whole thing, you know, it's like, damn it, this is a long, you know, but Hey, when you got 150 knives, it's hard to get it all in the one video. If you want to say anything about the knife, like I remember I had like 80 knives, uh, my last knife collection video, I had like 80 knives. And I, uh, I just went like this, like, so it was like a, a 40 minute video, th uh, maybe like 30 minutes. I don't remember how long it was, but I remember I originally recorded it and it was over an hour. And I said, I got to do this faster. This, I can't do this. I cannot upload over an hour video. So I wanted redoing it three times. And eventually the video came out like this. We beacon and then next to this one and then next to this one, like it just went fast. Like I might have said one thing, like, hey, I really like this knife, it's a really awesome knife. The we beacon. Next is the Savivi Keen Nader, a really awesome knife. Recurve Tonto, love the knife. Bang, go to the next one. Maybe 
the quiet carry waypoint. You know, like it was just really fast. So, but that's probably how I'm going to wind up having to do some of the videos um, in order to get them all on the channel. Now, OR goat scales, original goat scales for, uh, I got to put away. Four, no, I don't. I got another set that I'm going to put on when I get my blade, my reblade for the 8020.5. But if you guys do want to get some aluminum scales, which keep this thing still very lightweight. If you felt how light these scales are, they are super light, super, super light. I almost want to say like it barely brings up the weight, but it does make it feel more durable, but it does change the knife. So if you want to get some solid scales, um, I think I have a 15% discount code. I have a discount code. So um, Neves is the discount code if you guys want to use my discount code, or you guys can just use my link if you guys go to my OR Goat um video. I have some some plain ones without the ceramic coating right now. I do have some with a different design, and I'm gonna put them on when I reblade it so I can show you guys, you know, the difference. But point is, if you guys want to get something, you guys can use my discount code. That's all I'm saying. I just did when I originally uploaded the video, I wasn't able to say it because I didn't have the discount code. So now I'm trying to say it so you guys know. Anybody who wants to still get them, go watch the video. And I didn't say it in the video, but in the description, I put the code in. I just don't. Um, if you just go to their site and buy them, you can just put Neves in as the discount code. That subjugator might be my next purchase. It's pretty sweet. I love it. Um, why don't you wait for my video? Maybe I'll be able to link them. I don't think I'll be able to, but I do have a discount code with we knives, but there's no point to use it. And it is an affiliate link, but there's no point to use it, to be honest, because you can get the same price you getting them like with my discount code. Cause their, their price is a little bit higher unless if they lowered it, but I would try, I always try to tell you guys where to go more affordably. Um, Jesus, I had no idea that dagger was so big. Hell yeah, this thing is almost 11 inches. 10.75 inches, this one particular. This one is about the same. No, yeah. Yeah, they're the exact same. <laughs> Five inch blades. Yeah, like I said, these are self-defense knives. These are for sure self-defense knives. That's the only thing I could think of them for. Bag lighter, all good since the adjustment. Oh, the XL. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, just make sure, like I said before, if it comes undone again... Right. If yours, if you fix it, you know, watch my video. If you guys are having problems with the, with the XL bag lighter, if you guys are having problems with it, watch my video. It's only a three minute video, three, four minutes. And I show you how to fix it. Now, if you continue to have the same issues, then use the liquid Loctite or use more Loctite, but you need a Loctite that holds firm because that's a big knife. When you break that detent, that blade comes out and it fucking smacks and it creates vibration throughout the knife, which breaks up the Loctite and it makes the pivot screw start coming out. So you might have to use the liquid. The liquid is stronger than the, than the, the, the paste or the stick. Now, if you have any knife that is just not working with Loctite. Get, now listen to me very carefully here because I don't want you guys to fuck your knives up. Get red Loctite, which is permanent. Permanent. Don't use it. Just get it, right? And then get a tissue and put the blue Loctite, put a little dab of blue Loctite on a piece of paper or on some sort of, sort of surface and take a tiny, 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 tiny little of the red and mix it with the blue and then and then dab your screw in that so it's like 95 percent blue with five percent red loctite that works great i do it all the time 
four stubborn pivots that always back out. But like I said, don't use just the red. You'll never get your damn screw out. You'll strip it. You'll have to heat it up. You'll have to do all kinds of dumb stuff to get your screws out later on. I made homemade red lobster style cheddar cheese biscuits with tonight's dinner. I'm going to be in carbohydrate coma. Nice. Nice. I got a red lobster um, gift card me and Kara need to take advantage of soon. She's not big on seafood. I love some seafood. I'll eat the fuck out of seafood, but she's not a big seafood person. Microtech and Hawk should make a collab for the ultimate OTF. I'm not a big OTF guy. Um, I find liner locks hard to disengage. Well, it's just about the access to the liner. So some liners, yes, but there's a lot of liners that are easy to disengage because they give you good access. As long as they give you good access to that liner like this, see how you can see the liner? That's what you look for. Look for a cutout that gives you good access. That way you have plenty of room. Um, let me find another one. I don't know if I have another one right here. But, yeah, you just want to find a knife with good access to the liner. Okay, next subject. Um. Oh, by the way, anybody who has knives in for sharpening, if you did not send a note with your knives, I always request a note. If you guys forgot to send a note, keep in contact. Keep in contact because I will lose your Instagram or email. I will not remember it. I will not know your name on Instagram. And the name on the package will be different from your Instagram. And regardless, keep in contact. Just keep in contact because I get a lot of messages. I will not be able to find your, your information. So that's why I always request a note with your Instagram information because then when i want to sharpen your knife and find out information and show you pictures and mail it back and whatever i can easily find you but i can't find you when i've had 1500 messages since the last time i talked to you so keep in contact even if you're just saying hey what's up just give me a hey what's up um i take the chef over any quiet carry handle I oh you know i i, I agree <laughs> I almost agree. I love the Spidey Chef. I love the Quiet Carries too. But yes, I love, you know what? I love even more than the Spidey Chef. And I love the Spidey Chef. I want to get one. I really do. Um, I should just buy one because I love. Where's it at? Where's it at? Oh, yeah. I love the Slish Buoy. Love it. And it's kind of a similar build, you know, not saying it's the same. I'm just saying like, you know, the designer, the type of titanium, the type of access to the lock bar, all the good stuff. I love this knife. Now, a knife that I highly, highly recommend. I didn't write this down, so, but they redid this knife, and I know I've spoke about it a couple times, but I can't get you guys to understand enough. The one with the double-sided thumb studs, remember, this is the original one, the one with the single-sided thumb stud, not on the other side, but they have a new version with cone regular thumb studs that are double-sided. They also have, has a sharpening choil and all kinds of stuff. It is, a, it's upgraded, an upgraded version. I can't recommend that knife enough. It is so comfortable. The action is so glassy smooth. Oh, it's great. It's so good. I can't recommend it enough. It's like, it is expensive. It's like 200 bucks or like 180, maybe 200 bucks, whatever. It's expensive. I do have a 10% discount code with White Mountain Knives. So you can save yourself like 20 bucks if you buy it from White Mountain Knives with my discount code Needs Knives. But... Damn it, this thing is good. The concept convict, but the new one is better than this one. So I cannot recommend it enough, guys. It is so damn good. I, I'm like, I, I, I have one and I'm about to buy one. Like I just had to return the one I borrowed from Todd and I almost requested to him like, hey man, can I buy this from you? And, but I knew he'd say no because it's that awesome. So I didn't ask him. 
And then I was thinking about, I should just contact Concept and give them the whole, I'm a reviewer spiel. Hey, man, I really need that thumb stud version since you guys dropped a new one. I have the old one. But then I kind of feel like a dick doing that too. So I'm probably going to wind up buying it and using my own discount code. <laughs> it's damn good, man. Um, would you say the subjugator is like an XL kite fin? I want the blue one. Um, yes and no. Yes, because it's kind of the same shape and build, but it is... It's beefier for sure, right? Which I guess would come with any XL. So beefier, but it's not a hollow grind. So, um, and it has thumb studs. So it has a lot of differences, but you could say that, right? You could say that for sure. Um, I do feel that the subjugator has a little bit better tolerances. It's a little bit better build quality, so. Todd says, caressing that like button can lead to happy endings. So make sure you hit that like button. All right. Um, let me catch up. Um, I don't know any uh, media pages that cover restocks aside from hitting email or getting on the email things. So like go to all the knife dealers and just get on their email list. If you get on their email list, they will email you every time there's new stuff coming in stock. You'll get a lot of emails, but uh, that's about the only way I know of. Um, Tri-State says, I think the only way to make that work is buy one and get one as a loner. That way, the one you buy is always a good representation of what most people, um, of what most people experience. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't. When they send knives, ninety percent of the time they're just grabbing one. They're not grabbing like the best one or anything like that. Um, now, when you're getting a prototype. That can be the case a little bit, but a lot of times the prototypes, the, the actual final version is a little bit better than the prototype. What the hell is loose in here? I think I have a barrel spacer. It's a little loose in here. I'm going to have to tune that up when I get done. Uh, all right. I'm going to catch up to the chat and then we are going to get to the next subject. What time is it? Um, All right, uh, so I did want to talk. Damn, I, I'm backed up on comments, guys. I'm sorry. Holy shit. Holy shit. I am backed up so far. Donation. <laughs> Gary with the two bones. Do you find a different, do you find it different in kangaroo versus leather shot? Uh, yeah, well, kangaroo leather is, is thinner. So that's one thing. Kangaroo leather is, um, it's very dense, so it's thinner. So, like, the other leather is more furry and more thicker. Now, there's benefits to both, right? The benefits of the kangaroo is that for a lot of people, it's going to be easier for them to hold an angle because it doesn't have – it's dense. So, with furry leather, when you go to strop, it pushes down the leather. The leather gets – it's, like, cushiony. So, it, it kind of has bend to it. With the the kangaroo leather, it's dense and thin, so it's more firm. So you can put your edge on it and actually see that you have your edge angle nice and hit, nice and flat, and it's easier to use. Now, the negatives are that you can't really, you can, but not as much, resurface it. So when thick leather goes bad, and starts wearing and you just dropped on it so much you can shave the top layer off and, and resurface it basically <clears throat> and just reapply new new compounds with the kangaroo stuff you don't have much because it's so thin so yes you could probably resurface it once maybe twice but that's it the the other stuff you can resurface it for a long time so but 
what you could do is get the thick, dense stuff. Like the, the strop I just threw in the chat a little bit ago. This stuff is dense and it's thick. So you can resurface it a bunch of times. And it's just, it's really dense, flat leather. I haven't resurfaced this stuff, but I imagine it's, you know, it's really easy. But the point is, is that it's dense and it's easy. This is why I'm recommending it with the, the gunny juice, because it's so easy to apply to this. And it's going to be very easy for you guys to see your angle and get the exact angle you want. And then after using this type of strop for a while, you're going to have an easier time learning how to hold your angle. All right. I'm blowing past a lot of the comments because I got to catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up. Dun, dun, dun. Damn. There's a lot of comments. I'm sorry, guys. Everyday EDC. You again. I log on to Jack. Wait, I log on to Jack around while at work and it's you again. Damn it. Time to find a hole and watch some naps. Thank you, Everyday EDC. I do appreciate the donation with the five bones. And he is part of the Bang Gang. So shout out to him. We're going live tomorrow at noon. Shout out to the Bang Gang members. We're going live at noon tomorrow. Probably only for like an hour. We're going to do our first run. Our actual first run. Not the practice run. The actual first run. Hopefully it all goes well. I'm only going to have about an hour to spare, but we're going to get her done. There is so much information here. Thank you, Charles Woods, and shout out to another Bang Gang member. Same thing with um, Q-Ball, Ken Falker. I love his uh, last name, Faulkner. I'd love to tell everybody my last name was Faulkner. Um, Jeffrey DeLooch. Love your content. Which would you pick? Kaiser Sheepdog, Flipper Delete, or Ace Biblio? I have a good, I have a chance to buy one of them. Both of them have strong detents. Um, but to me, man, I don't know. Lefty says this is too strong of a detent. I can do it with my ring finger, brah. Like it's I can do it with my left hand. Like, I don't, I don't. Yes, it comes with a strong detent, but it breaks in pretty quick. This is easy peasy. At first, it is a little strong though, but it'll break in pretty quick. Um, but yeah, I uh, I think the Biblio has a better blade shape, all right, for EDC stuff. But the if you're talking about the titanium frame lock version, this one is a little bit thicker geometry than the liner lock version. So the liner lock version is a little bit better for EDC because it's more slicey. This is a little bit beefier, but it's still very slicey and very useful. Utility cuts are great. Slicing is great. It's a great knife. Now the Biblio, one of the problems with the Biblio is it's small. You're going to notice it's small. When you get it in hand, yes, you can get four fingers on it because of the choil, but the choil is small too. You can't really, it's not like it has a big choil or anything. It has a small choil. So you're going to be able to get the front nub of your finger and then the three or the, yeah, three fingers around the bottom and just the nub of your finger around the top. Then a lot of them came with issues. And I know the new ones don't have as many issues, but they're both good. But I think at this point, I would recommend the Sheepdog. you think there's a good market for custom quality, modern looking strops? I'm thinking of making some and selling them. Uh, yes, but it's going to take you time. You're going to have to, if you really wanted to do it, um, good quality uh, leather, you'd have to have a good price. You'd have to put them together. You'd have to send some out to some people to test out and try that are in the community like myself. Um, not saying specifically me. I'm just saying this would be a good way to promote yourself, promote yourself on Instagram. Um, possibly get a, a company that does stropping compounds to, to work with you a little bit if they don't already have strops, but they might already have strops. So you might not be able to do that, but you can be, maybe get their compounds. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I don't see why not. Depends on where you're located. That's one thing. But if you're in the U S you definitely have a market for it, but you have to promote yourself and it's going to take a lot of work. So don't think that a couple months on Instagram and on YouTube is going to do anything. You're going to, it's going to take you a while. You're going to have to promote yourself over and 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 over. And you're going to have to send stuff out to people. And, you know, but if you do all that, then yeah. 
Hey, Jared, questions about the Parrot 2, 2.0. Have you had it apart yet? No, I have not. How far back does the cut in the liner go? Would it be a good chop candidate? Right there. So it, the only problem is the screws start right here. So you have one screw. Okay, so you could chop it. The problem is, is I mean, the lanyard, right? If you put in your own lane, or sorry, lanyard. If you put your own clip in, you could chop it here and chop off about uh, a good inch, inch and a half. If you're going to use the body screw. If you're going to put your own screws in, then yeah, you could chop it up to here. If you put your own screws in, if you're not going to put your own screws in and you're not going to put your, you know, tap, you know, make some holes and tap them, then, uh, you get, you can go to right here. But yeah, the liner, uh, like I said, it, it's like right here. So just like a regular liner lock, you know, um, it, it's, uh, it seems just like a regular liner lock. There's just a lot of extra handle on it. <laughs> Life is good. Here we sit chatting about our hobby in the comfort of our homes with friends across the globe while war rages elsewhere. Man, life is good. Man, it's life, man. That is life. Um, I could go in on it, but I am not about to right now. Um, Tucson TS-195 or the concept comic. That's tough, man. Okay. I'm going to answer that. Kind of. The concept's more refined and feels a lot more. It feels premium. It really does. Um, it's definitely more comfortable in the hand. And the geometry is better. It cuts better. It slices better. It does everything better. Right? But you only have two forms of deployment with the other version. You have the reverse flick off the thumb stud. And the, the regular thumb stud flick. That's it. The Tucson depends on if you like fidget factor. Now, this is way smoother. Like, this is fall shut action. The Tucson is not. It is smooth, very smooth, and the action is incredible. So, you're going to have more fun with the Tucson because it's way more fidgety. Like, way more fidgety. It's, it's fucking hyper fidgety. But as a tool and just as, like, a high-end, good-feeling knife... The, the concept so i don't know if that helped at all but i love them both i you know i want to say the concept to be honest um it, just because i think it's a better tool the clip sucks on the, the two sun it sucks it's a fucking horrible clip this is an awesome clip um so yeah i'm gonna say the concept on this one to be honest yeah i'm gonna say the concept All right, I'm catching up to the bottom of the chat. Let's, uh, I want to talk about the ARR PM9 steel really quick. So, ARR PM9 steel. Now, when it originally came out, right, um, I did try, bam, a knife guys in the house. What's up, bitch? What's up, brother? Um, shout out to Bama Knife Guy, not making content anymore for us. Um, kind of just fell off the face of the earth, leaving us to fend for ourselves and the wolves of society. Uh, but uh, he's still in the chat somewhere. Shout out to Bama Knife Guy. Um, in the pocket, man, I thought he was gonna make a video. He still hasn't made a video. I've been checking every day, every day, been checking. Um, so the ARRPM9 steel. Originally, my first experience was amazing. 
Then I got some that were not so amazing. I think they were working it out. I think what they were doing is the prototypes that I tried were really good because they were prototypes. And then the first batch or so wasn't very good. So I think that's why the next knives I tried were not very good. Then I think they, they figured it out. I think they said, okay, let's, we rushed these ones a little bit, whatever the fuck they did. But they tuned it up and they got good. Now I do like the steel quite a bit. I really like it. Now I'm going to compare it to two other steels. I'm going to compare it to Nitro V14C28N and then we're going to roll this over to DC53. So Nitro V and 14C. Two good things really good about them. And the reason why I say they're very similar to one another. They sharpen up very easily. I mean, they're very easily sharpened. They both take a very good edge, whether it's a fine edge, toothy edge, or mid-grade edge. They do really good. They also take low angles very well, which that's why I love 14C. 14C will take a nice low angle, and its edge stability is pretty damn good. So you can get those really keen edges on there. And it takes a hell of a polish. Now, obviously, the harder it gets and the higher they do the HRC, the better. But in the field, when you're done using your knife for the day, 14C, man, you hit it up on the strop a couple times, that edge comes right back banging. And I love that about steel. That, And I think a lot of you guys will, you know, the more you're part of the Bang Gang squad, right? Shout out to the Bang Gang members. Um that uh, are going to be learning a lot about sharpening and stuff. Now that is, you're going to find that that is going to be something you are going to love. You're going to find that edges that take keen, ridiculous, sharp edges and hold a good fine edges are the steels you're going to wind up loving. And after you've used your edge a little bit and like, it's not dull, but it's, you know, it's not like it was, then you just take the strop and take a couple good clean passes on it and bam, it's right back to stickiness. So Nitro V and 14C are very similar in that way. Now, I personally would rather have 14C than Nitro V, but that's a me. Now, ARRPM9 has a lot of similar qualities like that. One thing that ARRPM9 steel that I noticed it has is high responsiveness to stropping meaning what like say if you used it and you kind of nick the edge up i'm not saying chipping i'm saying like just nick the edge up a little bit maybe there's a little bit of rolling this whatever it strops really easily you can bring an edge back pretty good on the arpm arrpm 9 steel it's highly responsive to a strop which is really good for user steel steels that you're going to be using in work and you know things that you want where you know you put a nice edge on it and you want it to keep coming back right so that is one good benefit about it now um but that's why there's some similarities there now personally i like the nitro v and the 14c a little bit better than the a r r p m 9 but they're still right there all bunched up together right um the um vaping a jewel yes i am now the dc 53 steel that stuff it's it's a d2 that's on steroids and what i mean by that is okay so d2 some attributes of d2 d2 does really good with a medium grip right can it take a fine edge yes but it does not do well with a fine edge. What do I mean? So when it takes a fine edge, if it takes some bite, which a lot of times it doesn't, a lot of times you do a polished edge on a D2 and it just gets slick as snot. Now let's say you get some bite on the edge and it actually gets some bite and you're like, fucking what the hell was Neve's knives talking about? This shit is really sticky. You go to use it and that bite goes away like quick. Now you're left with a slick, slick as snot edge. Now, if you put it at 600 grit, it's great. It has a lot of bite to it. It's hyper-aggressive. It's a great edge. Um, now, the DC-53 steel is the exact opposite. It is very good at, um, at, uh, a poly with a polished edge. And it strops back very good with a polished edge. 
Now, it also does good with a medium grid edge, too. So that's going to be the difference between the two. But it is basically a D2 with some added things to it. So you're going to get good edge retention with it. And that's assuming D2 with D, good D2, right? Because also another thing, you can they can run it harder. That's another thing. I forgot to say that. D2, a lot of companies don't run it very hard. And that's kind of the downfall to it. The DC53 steel does really, you know, they can, they can uh, bump up the HRC on it. And it does well. It does good. So... And I think it's a little bit tougher, too. Um, I'm pretty sure it's tougher. Anyways, the point is, is that it's really good with the polished edge. It takes a really good low angle. Now, you might notice some micro chipping if you go to too low of an angle um, with a polished edge. But, you know, just, just lower your angle a little bit. But either way, it's uh, very responsive to a strop and a really good steel. I personally like it now that I've been testing it. Now, I am still waiting for a controlled test on it. Um, there's been one on it, and it did really good. But I'm eager to see uh, Outpost 76, who I think is supposed to be testing it. But I'm eager to see so a really controlled test on it to see if it's shit or if it's good. But sharpening the fine edge it takes, um, the responsiveness to a strop is all really good and shows good signs. So it has really good signs. Um Tri-State EDC, for your information, I'm live tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. And Mrs. Tri-State will be joining me. Well, damn it, Tri-State, we're going to be live too, man. We're going to be live too. At, I don't know what your 11.30 is. I'm going to be live at 12 o'clock noon Central Time for the Bang Gang Squad. All sharpening. Uh, everybody will be able to join. Or sorry, everybody will be able to watch. But only the members can join in, meaning comment. Only the members will be able to comment, but everybody will be able to watch. But I'm not going to be giving everybody an opportunity to watch too, ma too many more times. There are going to be a, a bunch of times I'm going to let them watch just so that they can have the opportunity to see what's going on so they can decide if they want to become a member or not. But like I said, the longer... We do this, the better it's going to get. Every time it's going to get better because I'm going to wind up talking to companies and getting sharpening supplies so that I can donate to you guys, to the members. I'm going to um, I'm gonna get better at the cameras with this and just the communication with the people and deciding what the people are needing and where, we're, where we stand with the sharpening and everything. So it's only going to get better. But we got um, a really cool topic for sharpening we're going to talk about tomorrow. That's going to last one hour. And shout out to Q-Ball. Thank you for the five bones. Jared, Kenny in the pocket returns tomorrow night for a live. No shit. Awesome. I did not know that. Where the hell did you get this information? And I didn't. Um, But yeah, that's awesome. Hell yeah. I'd love to hear. Man, I would honestly love for him to come on here. I would totally have him on for a live if he would. If he would. Do me the honor of joining me. Uh, maybe Bama Knife Kick can make that happen. <laughs> I hope so, Bama. Maybe you can uh, talk to Kenny and get his ass over here on a live with me. Um, Jared, crew wear, toothier, polished, both. Crew wear is one of those steals. Now, I don't like doing this, and I know I've been sitting here doing this, but remember, the steals are very different. Okay, so if I say they are similar, I'm saying it from like just an experience type of way, like the, the how you experience the steel. So crew wear is like, in my opinion, it's kind of like a 14C28N on steroids, but on like a mega juiced up steroid. Like he's been juicing for a long time. He's ready for Mr. Olympics. That's crew wear. Crew wear does really good at low angles, does really good with a polished edge, does really good with a toothy edge. It strops back really good for a super steel, and it's it holds a great edge. It takes such a hyper-aggressive, with a good heat treat, by the way. Anything I say, I'm saying in the context of it having a good heat treat. If you can get crew wear, like say from Spyderco, Man, the, the the type of edge it takes, it's like some of the sharpest. If 
if you um you know lay back the angle and put a polished edge on it, you will feel some of the sharpest edges you've ever felt from crew wear. Crew wear is amazing. It's one of my all-time favorite steels. Crew wear, K390, both some of my favorite steels. Uh, CTS XHP, 14C28N, um, Magnet Cut at 64HRC. Um, these steels are all my shit. Don't miss that super chat. I didn't miss that super chat. You're talking about cue balls? Well, I didn't miss that one. Is there another one? Is there another one? Okay, these guys are talking about the cue ball. Yes, definitely go and subscribe to Cole's channel, who is Tri-State EDC. Him and his lovely wife, Kara, are going live tomorrow. Me and him have a wife um, with the same name because we're both brilliant. Um, Richard, bang. Thank you, Richard. I do appreciate it. Guys, thank you guys for all the donations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, did you guys notice the... Uh, now, I don't see them in the chat. Did you guys notice there's a new uh, sticker? Um, it's a um a slim midi. Maybe it's not working or something because I haven't seen it yet. But Kara made a new sticker for you guys. But thank you again, Richard. Thank you so much, man. I do I can't thank you guys enough for the donations, man. It helps so much. Okay, so uh oh, I'm not caught up yet. Sub to try stay EDC. Awesome. Yes. Is this metal complex? This is not metal complex. But shout out to metal complex. I'm coming for him. He better watch out. He better watch his back. Better watch his subscribers. I'm coming for him. All of them. All of them. And shout out to Nick Shabazz for letting up the old Jay Reed from Neves Knives is coming for him. All right. So what do you guys got new? What what knives have you guys picked up recently? I know some of you guys probably picked up the new Ferrum Forge Stinger titanium frame lock. I personally didn't get one, but I might have one on the way. I did. I do have some other knives on the way. Um, one of them I might possibly be buying. I technically got one in. I didn't realize. I forgot that I had one coming in for sharpening. Uh, one of those new Sharp by Designs knives. So I already know I'm probably going to wind up buying it. All right. Let's talk about Jewelers Loops. Um, and uh, because I don't have a story. I forgot to plan a story. Um, if you guys want story time, I'll come up with one. But otherwise, we'll continue talking knives. Also, I want to talk about clips really quick. So knives with clips that suck in many cases, just so you guys know, you guys can easily fix in a, a lot of cases, not always, but a lot of the budget knives that have titanium milled pocket clips, a lot of them work on some of your other budget knives that don't have titanium milled clips that maybe the clip sucks or you want to make it look better. Try out some of your titanium mill pocket clips from some of your other knives. A lot of times they're universal. A lot of times they have the same screw pattern. Um, now, sometimes you can take a clip that sucks and you can easily make it better with just some sandpaper. So uh, just know that a lot of the little problems that you guys might, that a knife might uh, not make it in your pocket a lot because of a stupid reason can be easily fixed. And those are some of the things we're going to teach in with the members. Um, I have a Sabenza 31 with my Carta on the way. Nice. Hell yeah. I got one in for sharpening right now. It's awesome. I just purchased a Tucson Sidewinder Sidewinder last night. Nice. Um, I plan on buying a Vosteed at some point. Hey, hey. Get it. Get that Vosteed. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just I'm going to leave it right there. Just hey get it I'm telling you right now get it <laughs> it's good it's really good i got it in the other room holy shit is it good it's a lot better than my budget version man right now like my eyes are watering for some reason i don't know why um but uh i got uh it's so good it's making me cry um no i um i got the budget version the prototype they don't even stand up next to the, the final version it's fucking awesome <laughs> Oh, the crown, the spine. 
They put a badass pivot in there, a titanium clip. Uh, it's still a, a good spring clip, but it's a titanium clip. The micarta is like completely different. It's way better. Um, it, it's it's good, man. It's great. M390. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm not talking about the Bellamy. I'm talking about the Nightshade right now. I've got the 129 and the Kaiser Critical Mini Exclusive on the way. Nice. Hopefully, hopefully you use my links. I'm just joking. Um, uh, that's awesome, Brian. Both of them are great. Both of those are great. Now, the Critical Mini Exclusive, It's listen to me. It's going to come with a very strong detent. Don't let that scare you. Just open and close it, open and close it, open and close it. A week later, it's going to be nice and broken in. It's going to be really smooth. Uh, the detent is going to be perfection. Just keep it going because it, you're going to think like, man, this knife, the detent is just way too strong on this. Just keep flipping it. It, it, it breaks in really nice, like perfect. And you're going to be so happy that it came with a strong detent. So when it comes and you get that strong detent, don't get upset. Be happy that you got a strong detent because it's going to break in so good. New SS1 coming. Um, Thanks to Bees Blades. Yeah, that is one of the, like the best front flippers. It is so easy. I'll grab it really quick. I got one right here. I think it's right here. Yes, it is. This is, look at how easy this thing is. Like, they, ha they have the, the exact jimping you want on a front flipper. You know, I think I can just go like this. So, it's so easy to kick. Look at how smooth this thing is. It is like one of the easiest front flippers ever. And I'm not joking about that whatsoever. I mean, it's like so, so easy. It's so easy to do this thing. Like this is probably one of the easiest knives you can go like this with. The clip does get in your hand though. I'll give you, I, I'm going to say that right now. The clip sucks. Not sucks as a clip, but sucks in your hand. But this is a knife you use like this. So it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? But damn it, is this thing smooth. Fall shut action. And it came out of the box like that. Whoa, Gilbert with the five bones. Loving my new MBK EWC and Concept Lucky Star. Also, got my dad a Concept Queasel for his birthday. Nice. Hell yeah. That's awesome, man. Good for him. And good for you. Hell yeah. And thank you, man. Thank you for the donation. That's awesome, man. Um, Got a new Medford Smooth Criminal on the way. Hey, Terry, let me know. Have you ever tried one before? If you haven't tried one, I guess just let me know how the detent is. Because they used to be really light. What is going on with this thing? Um, They used to be really light detents. And uh, I've heard that the detents are fixed now. I don't know if that's true or not. I just heard that that, that the detents are fixed. So let me know. Oh, there it is. One of my screws are loose. But yeah, let me know how that uh, goes. If it's um, if uh, the detent is better on it. There we go. It's had me a, a loose screw like my head. But yeah, let me know how the detent is on that because I want to know if it's true, if the detent is fixed or not. Just put some AWT aluminum scales on my Maximet PM2 and it's awesome. Zero blade play in any direction. Nice. Yeah, I heard those aught scales are awesome. I thought about getting some for the bug out. Um, but yeah, that's badass. Oh, Charles, thank you for the donation. Five bones, and we got a real five bones this time. Jared, I got a rock wall flipper and XHP. Nice. After seeing it here, 61 in the heat treat, did they do a good job? Um, I have not tried their XHP, but I love XHP. 
So I think you're going to be happy. I think you're going to be very happy. XHP is a fantastic steal. Now, I'm not very, to just being honest, I'm not very familiar with the HRC on XHP. Most of the XHP that I've tried has been, I've tried a bunch of X, XHP, tons of it. Um, and I've always been happy with it. So there's not too much XHP that I've been like, oh, this is shit. So I think you're going to be happy. Um, find out if what Spyderco runs theirs at, because if it's um, if it's the same as Spyderco's, then you know it's going to be good. Spyderco does, Spyderco does a good job on their XHP. But, uh, but yeah, the rock wall is great. Um, I love my rock wall. Um, I haven't tried the flipper one, but I imagine it's just as good. Opinions on the mini main street. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. Concept mini main street, the little main street. Stay away from it. There's no lock bar access. It's just, it sucks. It's not that good. Um, yeah, the lock bar access, man. You can't you can't get to the lock bar. That's the problem. And me, that's my biggest one of my one of my biggest pet peeves. But I personally would just stay away from it. If you want a good one, get the Kaiser Shard. That's a better version. Good access to the lock bar, same size, same designer, same everything. Better knife. Kaiser Shard. Same size, same designer, same everything. But it has multiple different versions. You have a titanium frame lock version. You have a micarta liner lock budget version, um, which is awesome. They're all awesome. I would recommend the liner lock version, not the titanium frame lock version. And I only say that because I think the liner lock version is more snappy and more drop shutty. While the frame lock version is uh, um, it's not as smooth. But yeah, go with the Kaiser Shard. You'll be a little bit happier. I got the new Kershaw Federalist. Uh, what do you think about CPM 145? You mean uh, 154? I hate CPM 154. Not hate. I dislike CPM 154. I think it's just too fine grained. I don't think it's um, it's not. It doesn't take a good edge. That's its problem. 154 CM is great. 154 CM takes a great edge. It just doesn't take a good high grit edge. It takes a good edge between 600 and a thousand grit. Right. Anything over that, the the, sh the the level of bite your edge gets goes down, okay? So um, with CPM 154, the problem is, is it's so fine-grained that over like 400 grit, it starts getting slick. So 600 grit, 800 grit, 1,000 grit, it's, it's just slick. Like it's like it's not even sharp. You know how when you feel an edge, you can feel it bite you a little bit when you just touch it like this? Well, that, it makes it to where it's just like, you can just run your fingers back and forth. Like, man, this thing ain't even sharp. That's the way it gets. Um, the higher the grit you go. So what you have to do is you want to keep it at a low grit. And, that, you know, if you keep it at a coarse grit, you're going to be fine. You'll be fine with it at a, with a coarse grit. I just, I'm not a big fan. I like the abilities to choose. Do I want a low angle with a high grit? Do I want a coarse grit? Do I want a medium grit? Do I want a polished edge? I like the choice. And with that steel, you don't really get a choice. Now, possibly with a very, very low angle, you might be able to go a little bit higher on the, with the grit. That's usually how it goes. So if you do already have it, um, yeah, just, just lower your angle really good. Get a nice fine edge and keep it in a medium grit, medium to low grit. Or just go with a coarse edge. One of the two. Um, I disagree, Spanky. 154 CM does not take a great polish. It can take a polish. See, there's a difference between taking a polish and being uh, good with a polish. Now, I'm not saying there's not any 154 CM that takes a good polish. I'm not saying that. I'm saying on the on the grand scheme of things, right? I've sharpened a lot of 154 CM. And I've had some that do okay with a polish, but for the most part, most of them around 1200 grit, the 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 bite from the edge starts going down instead of up, right? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the bite, not how it not how it looks or whether or not it takes a polish. I'm not talking about that. 154 cm takes and looks it polishes very easily that's the problem it polishes too good that's literally the problem it polishes so good that it gets slick and then it doesn't have the bite that you want and if it gets bite and you do get bite 
use it a couple times and you're not, it's just going to be slick as snot. And that's just how it is. Um, I've sharpened tons of it. And that's always the case, especially CPM 154. CPM 154, it's, that's why I don't really like it because every time I get it, it just, it doesn't take a good bite. It, uh, it's always better with a coarse edge, which I don't mind having a coarse edge. Coarse edges are great, but you like having the choice, right? Even if I want a coarse edge on it, one day I might want a polished edge or I might want a medium grid edge or a fine edge or something like that. Now, like I said, lowering the angle can increase your chances of increasing the bite. So by having a high angle, you're not definitely not going to get any bite um, with a polished edge. Lowering the angle can definitely increase your chances. You know, same thing like with D2, right? It does the same thing. Uh, just not as bad as like CPM 154. Uh, boom! K12 with the 20 bounce. Thank you, brother. Hey, Jared, I'm the Migaron Karaki with the dual grind. Would you raise the bevel with a new lower angle? Would you raise the bevel? Yes, I would definitely put a lower edge. So I think it, co it comes with a very high angle. So I would. I would put between 17 and 15 degrees on it, to be honest. Um, you can go with 17 to keep the toughness a little bit more because that's uh, the Karaki is um, uh, S90V. So I would go with 17 degrees at the, the, the highest. Yeah. Um, because it's a little bit thicker behind the edge. Now, I would just do 17 degrees across the whole thing. I wouldn't change the angle because of because it's a dual gr grind. I would just keep the same angle across the bat. And you are going to notice one spot's going to be thinner while the other part's going to be thicker, but that's fine. Um, but yes, I would definitely lower the angle. I think the angle that comes on it is like 30 degrees or something. It's crazy. It's high. So your edge bevel is going to double uh, in size at least. So... Yes, I would lower it to 17 degrees per side or lower. Um, and thank you again for the donation. Boom. I do. I Man, thank you so much. Uh, maybe I'm the odd man out, but I rarely go above 600 grit. Maybe stopping at a soft Arkansas or stopping on stopping. Uh, at a soft Arkansas sometimes. Yeah, 600 grit is my favorite too. But I like I like a polished edge on the steels that take a great polished edge. So like certain steels take, and don't get me wrong, those same steels would take a great 600 grit too. But I like, I like a good polished edge too. I like it all. But yes, yeah, 600 grit is probably my favorite. And one reason why is because you probably have the most amount of bite, right? And it's the most universal edge. When I say universal, what I mean is it is the, between all steels, if you put all the steels in a bucket, you can almost guarantee a 600 grit edge is going to work the best on all of them. That's what I mean. So your highest probabilities of doing a 600 grit edge is most likely going to work on just about any steel. Now, whether or not that steel will do better at a higher grit is a different story, right? But 600 grit does good just about across the board. Um, so that's why I think it's the best grit. Now, your edge retention actually, so it depends on the steel now, right? But some steels do get a little bit better edge retention if you go up with grit. Um, some do better with 600 grit. Some do better at 1500 grit with edge retention, right? But for the most part, you're not going to be able to notice. If you strop your edges and you maintain your edges, it's not going to matter. My point is, is that say, if, excuse me, if you get home from using your knife, right? If you use your knife, you cut 50 feet of cardboard. You're going to strop anyways. You're not just going to set your knife, at least I would. You're not just going to set your knife down and say, hey, I'm going to keep cutting cardboard until it goes dull. Nah, fuck that. Strop your edge. Bring that edge right back to new and then continue your cutting the next day, right? So, of course, it is still a good thing to know 
you know, what your edge retention is going to be across the board. But with when you add in scrapping and honing variables, that extends the life of your edge and changes the results on what the number would be if we did a cut test adding in stropping and honing. What's up, Blade Stuff? I mess up my edges after I after I try going higher than six to eight hundred grit. It might be the steel. That's one thing. And you probably have a problem with convexing around. You probably have a problem with lifting. So what I mean by lifting is let's pretend this is my stone. So you probably have a problem going like, let me zoom in a little bit. You probably have a problem going like this, going across a stone and going like this. Right? You want to keep your edge nice and flat and be able to go like this. See that? See how I didn't lift? You got to concentrate on being able to go across your stone without lifting. And what I mean by lifting is lifting my angle. So you don't want to go across the stone and do this. You don't want to do that. You want to go across your stone and keep the same angle. See how I'm holding the same angle? Well, now it just got blurry, but. So that's probably your problem. And you're probably rounding off the edge a little bit. And what's happening is, is because the whole point of when you move up in grip, you're taking your edge and you're refining it and refining it and refining it. So this is 600 grit. This is 800 grit. This is 1,000 grit, right? You're refining it finer and finer and finer and finer. So you're probably taking that very keen extended tip of the apex, right? The very, very tip of the apex. And you're probably rounding it. You're probably going like this over the top of it, which is making it cut off and making it a little bit less dull. There's no nothing wrong with convexing, but you want to convex from the backside, not from the apex, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to put into words, I guess. Um, you can convex your edge. There's no problem with that. That's only going to make your edge stronger. Now, yes, it won't. It'll. It's not going to be as keen as a V-grind, but it can pass through materials sometimes a little bit better. It does depend. And there is a little bit mixture of both. You can have a mixture. Like you can have a um, a low convex, if that makes sense. So like there's like a high convex where it's like really rounded. And then there's like a low convex where it's like barely convex. And you're just, you're, keeping a high level of bite and sharpness and keenness while increasing the toughness a little bit. It's just a little bit of convexing. That is a thing. Um, I just put my Spyderco drunken at 600 grit, 18 degrees per side, and it's scary. Bang. Yeah, 18 degrees, 600 grit is awesome. Fuck yeah. Um, I love a good 800 grit. I don't go above 1600. There you go. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, 600 grit. I think, like I said, 600 grit is like the best grit to, to go at. Um, there are going to be some steels that maybe perform a little bit better at a little bit higher grit, but 600 grit is great. And, you know, 1500 grit is all grits, depending on the, the steel is good. It just depends on the steel. But like I said, most steels do really good between 600 and 1200 grit. Um, do you think some people do CPM 154 better? Yes, I am really impressed with my Tor Field 2.0. It has CPM 154, and I really like it. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Everybody's gonna have their preferences, right? I deal with I've dealt with a lot of steels, so um, uh, it's not that like I hate it. And when I say I don't like it, I, I'm not saying like I don't like I have some too, right? It's not that I don't like it, it's just that. If I have the choice between a bunch of steels, that's not going to be my first choice. Um, but there's nothing wrong with you liking it. And you might have some better. 
just like 154 cm right 154 cm there is really good 154 cm and then there's you know some okay 154 cm there's some 154 cm out there that i found that is like like whoa this shit is fucking amazing um like my buck marksman my buck marksman had some of the best 154 cm i ever felt and it almost made me i i thought I almost thought 154 cm that was 154 cm, so I like fell in love with it. But then I found out <laughs> that that's not all 154 cm, and I like I loved it, man. My, my and I would do 600 grit every time on it, and it would just get so fucking sharp. Like age, I loved it, I loved it. But then I found out that 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 wasn't all. 154 cm so yeah there of course you sometimes you're gonna get lucky there's gonna be some steals that it's just like damn it man they did this because it's not just the hrc it's the quality heat treat too some steals are they're just gonna have a better quality heat treat like you know they were just everything lined up that day right everything just aligned that day that's what i said about my cts xhp on my my slish buoy everything lined up the day they made this shit when they made this, and I like CTS XHP regardless, but this CTS XHP, I love it because it's just like they did everything perfect when they did the CTS XHP. So yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. I love the Kershaw Federalist. If it wasn't a slip joint, I'd have one. I don't know that one, man. Um, full size Ritter Ho 20 CV for 170. Awesome knife. I'm not so chatty tonight as I'm building a small coffee bar. Y'all are doing just fine without me, so carry on. Good vibes. Thank you, Urban Woodsman, and uh, good luck. Good luck on your coffee bar. Just finished my coffee. Yes, CPM 154 is a powdered version of 154 CM. So 154 CM is um is already like a fine, it's you know pretty fine grained already. Then uh, making a powdered version is going to increase the toughness. It's going to increase the edge retention slightly, slightly, but it's going to increase the toughness a lot because the more fine grained the steel is, the tougher it is. So that's why they make a powdered version of any steel, right? Any steel, when they do a powdered version of it, like say D2 and CPM D2, it's a powdered version of D2. It increases the toughness and increases the edge retention by like 7% or something. It's something very small, but it does increase it a little bit. But the toughness massively goes up. But, you know, it, it makes it more fine grain. Now, sometimes that's a good thing when we're talking about edges and sometimes it's not. It just depends. Have you heard of a company called Pocket Strap? I just ordered a couple different ones from them. I don't think so. If I have, I can't think of it. Maybe. Um, I don't think so though. Where are they out of? The United States or or I don't I don't know. Um, handle it school. Jared knows. Yes, yes. That is a school I went to. Handle it school. Most of you motherfuckers couldn't handle it. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Elmax is seriously underrated. I wish Elmax was way more available. I do too. And I'm guessing it is just availability. But yeah, I agree. I wish we seen Elmax so much more. I, I love Elmax. Elmax is a great steal. But that's the problem though, is not seeing it enough, right? You can love it as much as you want, but if you can't fucking get it, what does it matter? Uh, but yeah, I wish we'd seen it more too. I have one Hogue in CPM 154 and one in 154 CM. Nice. And good for you. I um, I just tend personally now to stay away from the CPM 154. That's just me personally. Um. I don't think they always... Okay, so one reason why companies might like to use it is because it's so easy to work with. So easy. When they grind it, like it grinds like so easy for them. So that's why a lot of them want to use it. It's not necessarily because it's good for you, but it's good for them. So... 
Um, and I'm not like saying that if you don't like it, enjoy it. Love it. Right. Love it. Enjoy it. Um, just used my workshop Ken onion belt sharpener on my kitchen knives for the first time yesterday. And it was so nice. Hell yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I think with, uh, that Ken onion workshop sharpener, I think it's just my opinion. And I'm not saying that the regular system doesn't work great because it does, but the belt uh, grinder attachment is like, to me, a must. I love it. I love the, the attachment that comes with it. I almost never even take it off because I just, um, it, it makes things go faster and it gives you the ability to get up tight to the, the choils and everything. And I use it for a lot of things, not just uh, doing sharpening on fixed blades and stuff. There you go. Bang. As much as you can. Buck is definitely known for its good heat treat on knives for sure. Yes, that is so true. So true. Yep. Boss. They're not called the boss for nothing. Uh, Q ball says ho deca with Magnica pre-sale on knifecenter.com. No shit. They're they're opening they open up a pre-order for them for the Magna Cut Decas. I might have to get up on that. Now, what I'm worried about, because let's be clear, guys. Spiderco does really good heat treats on their steels as of now and last year, right? Um, I'm not speaking for 10 years ago or whatever, but Spiderco used a lot of different steels. Now, they have the track record of doing the steel on at the optimal HRC that is required, like Laren Thomas, he recommended 64 HRC for like the mules and stuff like that. And that's what Spiderco did with crew wear, uh, Maximet and all the steels they do, right? They do them at the heat treat and probably a good quality heat treat too, but also the HRC that they're supposed to be at, because that's, there's two variables there, the HRC and the quality of heat treat. I'm not saying that Hogue does bad heat treat. So don't don't take it as that when I say this next sentence. But I hope that they don't do it at a low HRC. I hope they keep it at, I hope they do it at like 64, 63, 64. Because if they do it at a lower HRC, we're going to find and hear a lot of complaining. That's all I'm going to say. I personally would like to know. So... If anybody has the opportunity, go and ask Hogue, what HRC are you putting that that uh, Magna Cut to? Find out. Find out what they're going to take it to so we can have a conversation about it. And before they actually run it and do it, we can let them know, hey, don't do that. You know, if they say 60, 61, say, hey, hey, just letting you know right now, Laren does not recommend that you do that. Especially for a folder. There's pocket straps made in America. Nice, nice, nice. Very good. Very good, very good. LMAX has been my favorite steel since the beginning. I like LMAX. I love LMAX. I just wish we'd seen it more. That's my biggest issue with it. That's actually my only issue with it because I want to see it more. I wish it was something that was more common. In fact, I can't even think of who's even using it right now. Who the fuck is using LMAX right now? I don't know. I haven't gotten the attachment yet, but I planned on it as soon as possible. Yeah, you you will you'll you'll like it. Definitely get it. If you have the opportunity to get it, it opens up the doors where you can use it for so many. Now, don't get me wrong, the, the regular system you can use on other things, but it's bigger. Um, it allows you to do more. And you have that flat plane, so you can do more. You can do it more freehand. You can do bigger knives, swords, and shit like that. Lawnmower blades, whatever. Send it again, Chris. I don't think I got it. Bree says, if you don't know about handling school, a new schedule is coming out soon. It's kind of like you get thrown in the deep end of the pool. You'll either figure it out or you won't graduate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. 
Yes, yes. Good old memories of Hanlon School. Let's just say most don't graduate. Most don't graduate. <laughs> 60 to 62. Uh, don't know what that means. Oh, that's what you're saying. That's what they're saying. It is 60 to 62. Well, everybody needs to message them right now and tell them, listen, get it up to 64. Get it up to 64 because otherwise there's going to be a lot. There's going to be some issues. I don't know. What, that that's I believe that's what BGM is running it at, and he's about to bump it up too because people are complaining. So if you're talking about Hogue right now, then yes, everybody go and message them and let them know that um, testings are coming out and finding out that it's it does a lot better at 64. Now, I think Outpost 76 got one from BGM, and the cut tested really good in edge retention, but I think it has a, a more maybe things were just aligned better with that. I don't know. Right. But I, I'm pretty positive that we would find out across the board. 64 is going to be the way to go with it. We'll see. Uh Giant Mouse is using L Max a couple. Yeah, but I guess, I guess they're still doing the, the Sonoma. So okay, um, yeah, I I got my um um my Giant Mouse uh, Ace Grand, and that's an L Max. So yeah, but they don't make that no more. Um, I guess I would just like to see it more often, and. Uh, I just don't see it enough, but yeah, I guess they're using it. They use it on a lot of European knives, and Giant Mouse uses it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wish they were still doing the Ace Grand. Fucking hell of a knife, man. Um, but yeah, they like to use a lot of M three ninety two. But I'd way rather have L Max from them than M three ninety. Seems like they don't do a good job with their M three ninety, but they do a good job with their L Max. Unless if it's Riat, if Riat's doing it, then yeah, Riat does a good job with their with the M three ninety. Um, recently watched the rant on lack of real sharpening tools. How do you add your own? Watch my video. Get a Dremel. You can use a diamond file. And it, or a diamond rod and some sandpaper, but I recommend just getting a Dremel. You can get a Dremel for like 20 bucks. Get a Dremel for 20 bucks and get a little bit kit. Um, there's like a little sandpaper wheel and a bit that goes on the Dremel, and you can get a carbide bit. Carbide bits are like 10, 12 bucks. Get a carbide cutting bit. It's for hardened steels. Get that. Then you can... You can watch my video on it. I have a few different videos, but uh, you can cut it out with the carbide bit and then you take the sandpaper wheel and you soften it up. Bang. Real easy. I got a bunch of videos on it. I have some doing it by hand with diamond files. I have some doing it with just the sandpaper wheel. I have some doing it with an aluminum oxide wheel. And then I have some doing it with, which is the best way, which is the carbide cutting bit, then sandpaper. That's the best way. Was on the road for three hours. Well, that's not too long. That's a, that's a short road trip. But yeah, I feel you. I feel you. They still make the Grand. Really? There was just a restock not that long ago. They do a lot of knives in the Italian factory, though. So batch is going to spread out. Really? I thought it was discontinued. Are you sure? Maybe I'm the fucked up one here. I could have swore they discontinued it. What's up, Jason? I can buy... Wait, shout out to Blades and Fades, first of all. First of all, he's a bang gang member. Second of all, he has his own channel. Shout out to his YouTube channel. He recently got monetized. So go and follow his channel. Help give him some support. I can do things... I can do a thing or two with the drama. Same here. That's why I highly recommend, especially if you're part of the bang gang member... Get a Dremel because you are going to find out as we move along that there are so many things like it's going to be a lifesaver for so many things. Get a Dremel, 
and a bit set. They're very cheap. You can get it all for like 40 bucks if you go like budget, you know. Obviously, you can buy name brand and spend like 80 bucks, right? 100 bucks. But you can get by with just a budget kit. And there's there's all different, and you you can use it for polishing. You can use it for changing finishes. You can change it for adding choils. You can use it for making cutouts to your lock bars. You can use it for so many fucking things. Changing blade shapes if you really wanted to, but we're not going to go that far. But um, I recommend a belt grinder for that. Um, but yeah, if you get one of those, you will be surprised how many doors open up that you can do with one of those. Anyone know some aftermarket scales for the Spider Coast stretch? I don't know right hand, but try RC Blade Works. Try RC Blade Works. Um, possibly Flytanium. I'm not sure about it though. Um, also try uh there's another one I'm not thinking of. Um damn it. I can't think of it. But yeah, RC Blade works possibly. Yes. Yes, Heather. Yes. Dremel is a great tool for, for so many things. And it makes, like, because the same things you could do by hand, right? Same things you could totally do by hand. But it just makes light work out of everything. And after you see the effort that you put in, like, say, with a diamond file, right? The diamond file on a hardened steel, after you've spent the time doing that, then you get a Dremel and you're like, and you're like, why the fuck didn't I get this sooner? Like it pays for itself. It pays for itself. Literally the time you spend doing the other things that you would do by hand. When you get a Dremel, it pays for itself. If you love your time, if you respect your time, which I respect my time, time is money. That's the best thumbnail you could do. Looks like you're missing a chromosome. Okay. Bingo. All right. Let's talk about jeweler loops really quick. I'm going to grab one. And we're going to talk about why I think they are important and essential. Not essential, but they can, they can help a lot. So getting a jeweler's loop. See, for the Bang Gang members, they're going to find out about all this because... We're going to make sure they get some eventually. You can get these very cheap too. Six bucks. I think this one was seven bucks. And this one's 40 times magnification. This one's 60 times magnification. Comes with a light. Two different lights. Oh, it's bright in here right now, so you probably can't see it. But this gives you the ability to... Get really close to your edge and actually see how your grip pattern is doing. And you can see the top of your edge bevel all the way down to the apex. And you can see what's happening. You can see where you're raising up, where you are. Damn, this is such a clean looking edge. Holy shit, I did a good job with this. Um, But it lets you see where your downfalls are, where you're raising your angle, where you're lowering your angle. Um. Like, say if you hit something on a strap, right? Like, let, let's just, I'm just going to put it in a little bit of uh, easy terms. So, say if I hit this angle, right? Now, if I check, right? And I kind of remember, like, okay, I kind of held a little high right there. Now, I can look through there and see if I hit the back to the apex, the back of the edge bevel to the very tip of the apex. I can see if I did that. Now, if... You start hitting the strop and you start polishing the back of your edge bevel back here, then yeah, your angle's too low, right? Of course. But so many things it helps with. Now you can also, it also works for um just so many little details, like even like working on things and being able to see up close, like, oh man, is there a burr around my, my uh, detent hole? Right. And I can look down in there and say, yes, there is a little burr around my detent hole. Uh, things like that. Just so many little details. And you know, what also works really good on Instagram, 
<laughs> recording your edges on Instagram. Sometimes how I get my zoom in edges of my Instagram, which is very difficult to do. I take my phone and I hold my little thing like this up to my camera and I go across my edge. <laughs> it's difficult. So I don't uh, recommend it too much, but hey, it works. But yes, I do uh, think jeweler loops can can help when you I, I wouldn't recommend it from the beginning probably i i would say uh, maybe maybe though i guess it just depends but you should have some what of an understanding of how angles work first and grip patterns then they massively benefit Thanks, Spanky. I'm going to take that as a compliment. Thank you, brother. Um, all right. Uh, how can some factory edges feel sharp then? Wait, hold on. How can some factory edges feel sharp then after you sharpen it, it feels less sharp? Why is that? Why does that happen sometimes? Why is it that you can have a factory edge, right? And the factory edge just feels nice and sharp. Then you sharpen it, and you're like, why doesn't my edge? You know, everybody says that sh new edges are better than factory edges. Factory edges are shit. I know it is, Spanky. I know it is, and I took it as a compliment. Thank you very much. Um, But one of the reasons why your edge might not feel as sharp as the factory edge, there's a couple reasons. One, and this is... uh. There, there's two things that are probably going to be the most common. One is your angle, right? If you raised your angle compared to what was on the edge already, right? So say your edge bevel is a little smaller than what the factory edge was, meaning the size of the edge bevel, how high it goes up the blade. Well, then it's going to feel a little less sharp because the, the factory edge was a lower angle. Yours is a higher angle. Theirs was a lower angle. Now, the next thing is most factory edges are around 400 grit. 400 grit. 400 grit is a, a lot. Some people would consider it a medium grit edge. So it's like right in between a coarse and a medium grit. So it is a medium grit, but it's on the lower end of medium. So it's a very aggressive edge. It has a lot of teeth on it. It has a lot of bite. The teeth are very aggressive. It's like, like this serrations, right? Think of this as a 400 grit, and this is an 800 grit, right? The teeth, think about the tips of my fingers as teeth of the edge are a lot more aggressive on a 400 grit. So when you rub your finger across the teeth, you can feel those teeth a lot more. Now you come in and you put a new edge on it and you take the teeth and you make them finer, right? So that's why sometimes when you, if you match the same angle as what's on the factory edge, your edge might, might not possibly feel as sharp now another thing is that you might not have a perfect flat edge bevel and you are convexing a little bit if you're freehanding so that's where learning how to hold your angle perfect is going to benefit you and yes that is a thing you can do a freehand edge with a perfectly flat edge bevel. Some people think that that's a myth. Now, the thing is, is that convex edges are easier, right? I don't care what anybody says. That is a fact. Fact. Convex edges are easier. That's why a lot of people say that freehand, that, oh, a perfectly flat edge bevel is impossible to do freehand. It's impossible. You can't do a perfectly flat edge freehand. Well, that's not true. You can do a perfectly flat edge bevel freehand, but it's just a lot harder. And not, not that it's harder. It takes more control. You have to be a little bit more talented and have a lot more uh, muscle memory, right? But convex edges are a lot easier. They're a lot easier because you, you it's harder to hold the exact same angle 
over and over and over and over and over and over on it on a stone. It's it's sometimes nearly impossible. And, and to a lot of people, it's going to be impossible because you can't do it. You don't have the practice. You don't have the muscle memory to know when you are holding the exact same angle you just did. So you lift and it's a tiny bit. Like right now, I just changed angles. Did you guys even notice that? Just changed angles again, 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 right? You might change the angle a tiny bit. See how I'm barely moving it? Now that little tiny bit will convex your edge. So that, and that's why it's easier. Right. So and I recommend everybody when they first start freehanding to convex. Fuck yeah, convex. Convex your edge away. Do a great convex. Learn how to convex your edge. Because that is where you're going to learn how to do a perfectly flat edge bevel, which is where the jeweler's loop's gonna come in, and you're gonna learn how to perfectly make your edge bevel flat. And we'll we'll, we'll learn that. But there's nothing wrong with convex in your edge, but it's it's going to increase the toughness and your edge might not feel quite as sharp, but it's still going to be a damn good quality edge. And in some cases, it's going to be it's going to feel even sharper. Right. It does depend. But I do recommend that's where you start uh, is. With uh, convexing your edge learning how to convex an edge because that's going to be the easiest for you to do. You're still trying to do it as perfect as possible and you're trying to get it as flat as possible. But while you're trying to get it as flat as possible, you're going to convex. Um, okay. So, um, I'm pretty sure we've hit everything on my list. It is 10.02, getting late. Now, I did not uh, come up with a story. I probably should have um, come up with some stories about handling school. Fuck. Um, but I don't think you guys, is, you guys aren't uh, ready for stories like that for sure. Um I bet those bladesmiths in Nepal mountains are like, Psh, we do everything hand ground and it's always flat. <laughs> hey, um, like I said, it, it, you, when you know how, right, when you do it and you've done it over and over and over and over and over, you get good at it. Um, I can do a perfectly flat edge bevel. And I can prove I can do a perfectly flat edge bevel. Um, I can, like, one way to know that you're doing a perfectly flat edge bevel is, well, one, you can you can test it on a flat plane, especially if it's a low angle. It's easier. There's a bunch of different ways to tell. Uh, you can even tell with an angle guide. But one way to be certain is after you sharpen it, you put it in a fixed angle system and lay that stone that's on a fixed angle system on it. And do one scratch, you know, at the same angle. Obviously, you have to match it up. But once you match it up, it should hit the entire thing perfectly. Take us to school. You guys ain't ready. You guys ain't fucking ready. You already buy it. Let me know when, Jared, I can get a 12 on that sharpness measuring machine thing. Let me know when, Jared. I don't know what you mean. Um, let me know when, Jared, I can get a 12. I can get a 2 on it. You know, anybody can cheat. <laughs> then that's the thing with that sharpness tester, man. It's... That's why I, I, I need to do my video on it. I have had it for entirely way too long. I should have done it a long time ago. But there's a problem with it. The problem is, is that it's easy to cheat. Damn it, this thing is sharp. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, it's easy. And here I am. I'm going to strap it. <laughs> I'm sitting here talking about how sharp it is. And I'm like, I just touched the edge with my fingers. I need to strop it now. That's how my stupid mind works. It's like. You just talked about how ridiculously sharp it is, but just because you touched your fingers to it, you need to strop it? Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, I'm ridiculous. Anyways, but that machine, the problem with it, man, is you can manipulate the numbers so easily. Unless if you are being very, very honest, which is you can be honest with yourself, right? But when you're on camera, you it's easy to manipulate the numbers. And I mean that because nobody wants to be like, say if you just saw somebody do a spider call, right? Right. They just did a spider call and they got like a, a 112. And then you have your spider call. You want yours to go under that, right? You want to be known for your sharp edges. So you would love to have a hundred, right? So that you're going to be like, damn, mine was sharper than his. Right. But the, so the problem with that is that you can easily do that. I could do that right now. Like, and it has nothing to do with the edge actually being a hundred. It's because I'm manipulating it. It's so easy to manipulate. So that's the problem with that machine. Now, if I want to be honest with myself, I can do it honestly for sure. And, uh, and get the actual number. And that's where that testing machine works. Great. Now, that's why taking the three numbers and averaging it out is really good, but you have to do it correctly. Otherwise you're just, you're, you're just, you're bullshitting people. Right. And I can tell when people are bullshitting people, I can see it. Right. Now, another thing, the lower that number doesn't mean a lot, a lot, right? Like in a lot of cases I see, I've seen some really low numbers from people and I knew they were cheating, but you don't want that number, right? Like, let's say, let's say I get on there right now with this and I get a 12 on it. I don't want a 12 on this knife. If I get a 12 on this knife, that means this, this edge is absolute fucking garbage. It's garbage. You guys are like, why? I thought sharpness was the thing. That means my edge is so fragile, so fragile that it's not even worth anything. Like it's worth it whittling hair that's it that's what i'm it's good for i'm good for whittling hair but now actually doing anything else with it is stupid it's dumb now i'm not saying like there isn't and i'm talking about this knife like i'm not saying whatever knife you're talking about because i'm sure if you get a knife that's five thousands behind the edge and you have the angle of 17 degrees per side i don't know maybe you can get numbers like that but with certain knives and a knife at five thousandths behind the edge at 17 degrees per side is going to be a very fragile fucking edge. So hitting again, hitting 12 is not that great. That's not a great thing. It, it, so it's like, yeah, the levels of sharpness is so high, but the, the level of integrity strength is gone. It's gone. There is a level. Like I said, there's always a balancing beam. Right, kind of like with HRCs and heat treats, right? You don't want such a hard steel to where there's no toughness at all, right? And it's just as fragile as glass. Just like you don't want a, such a tough steel to where there's no hardness to where your edge just rolls every time you fucking use it. Same thing with sharpness. You want a level, a balance. You want it as sharp as you can get while keeping the toughness as high as possible. That's the point. All right, that's the point. We all want the highest level of sharpness without sacrificing the level of of toughness and durability and you know just integrity of the edge. Um, edge stability. We want edge stability. Edge stability is so important for a cutting tool. Um, if you have no edge stability and it's just sharpness, it's worthless. Worthless. It's good for fucking cutting through paper. It's good for cutting through hair. It's not good for cutting through cardboard. It's not good for cutting through rope. It's not good for cutting through straps. It's not good for cutting anything but paper and hair. Josh Branson, a little chip in the bucket, brother. Thank you for the two bones, Josh. I do appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who donates, and we are about to take off. My other device over here is about to go down. Yes, cue ball. What's up, brother? What's up? He just said, Jared, answer me, motherfucker. What's up? Let me know. I'm, uh, I'm, this is the one I purchased. And I don't know what that is. I can't click on it. Um, damn it. Damn it. 
Are, were, I don't know. I don't know. Were you talking to me, cue ball? Um, I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom. So you let me know what you wanted to say to me. Obviously, you want... Obviously, you want to be sharp, but toughness is important. Measuring sharpness just seems like bragging rights. Right. Now, there is still a level of sharpness you want, right? Like I said, everybody wants that high level of sharpness, but, but me personally, like, let, let's be clear. If we were just doing it for bragging rights, then that's one thing, right? And we're going to be clear about it. Like, listen, this has nothing to do with the quality of edge. This is all about bragging rights. We can do that, right? Anybody can do that. But then, like I said, the, it's about, this is not about the quality of an edge. This is all about bragging rights on sharpness because bragging rights technically should come from, which is a very hard thing to, to, to figure out or to justify or to measure. That's my word. It's very hard to measure, but you're, you're wanting the best edge stability as you can get while having the best or the highest level of sharpness, toughness, you know, you want that balance. Did you get your ticket? No, I did not get a ticket. You talking about an email or something? Maybe. I might have. I'll check after we hang up. Um, Tickets for uh, Blade Show in Atlanta. Um. But uh, I probably got them on email. If that, are you talking about for the plane flight, or are you talking about for Blade Show? But no, I didn't get anything. Blade Show tickets. Blade Show tickets. You need to get them now. Okay. Okay. I'll grab them as soon as I get off of this. Early bird is open right now. Okay. I'll grab it. Um. Very familiar with your. Wheeler sounding stuff. I have one of the big guns. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll get it right after I hang up from here. I will get it. Uh, I'll go right on there. What is it? Bladeshow.com, bladeshowatlanta.com or something. Um, I sent you the links. Okay, you sent them to my phone. Bees, of course you got your tickets today. You're just fucking you're just bragging. Fucking bees of this bragging. Bees are always bragging. Jared isn't famous enough to get free tickets. That's true. <laughs> sure, I wish. I wish. But no, they they would definitely charge me. Um, because there's nobody to call. That's the thing. It's a convention. So it's a convention, and then the people pay for their booths to go to this convention. So there's really nobody I can call to get the free tickets. Everybody pays. Oh, what's up? B. Wallace. B. Wallace is in the house. He purchased his today because he's got the early bird special and he's a bragger. Like like B's blades. <laughs> no, follow my link. Uh well, I'm guessing he put a link in here. But uh Chris, send me a link on uh email or on um on my phone, please. Okay, thank you. Through the group? Okay. All right. Um, Knife Electric says, we got a table already, so technically my ticket was free. Work is paying. Somebody else is a bragger in here. We got a lot of fucking braggers in here. <laughs> Jared, don't get stuck not getting the early bird. We all have ours except you. Fucking shit. I'm getting it right now, okay? I'm going to hang up with you guys since you, oh, hell yeah. Oh, uh, is Bama Knife still in here? Uh, but yeah, all right, guys, I'm just going to hang up because I got a lot of messages I got to get to, a lot of shit to deal with tomorrow to the Bang Gang Squad. Going live at noon central time, my time, 12 o'clock noon central. We're going to go live for one hour. One hour. I don't want to take up too much of you guys' day. This will be the first live for the Bang Gang Squad members. Um, 
and we already did a test run. This time we're going to do a real live show. I have a few topics we're going to hit really quick. Now, most of the ones in the future are probably going to be like an hour and a half, two hours or something, but we're going to run it short on this one. Um, we're just going to do it really quick. There's some things I want to talk about, and that's mostly what it's about. There's some topics I want to hit, some things I think that's important, things I think people should get, and um, yeah, we'll get into it tomorrow. But thank you to everybody who donated tonight. Thank you to all the members for signing up to the bang gang squad i do love you guys and appreciate every bit of support you guys give me um all the donations all the people who donate knives all the patron members by the way to the patron members the giveaway is coming up i might post it tomorrow i'm not positive but i'll probably post it tomorrow or monday because i'm sure every, all the entries are in and as soon as i'm done doing the knife collection videos which there's a lot of them but as soon as i get done with those you guys are gonna have first dibs on the knife on the knife sale then also somebody else might be uh consigning some knives over to me to sell too uh but anyways that'll be open to the public but whatever the the patron members don't pick from the knife collection will go to the public but i love you guys thank you guys for everything thank you to the moderators for always having my back and helping out with links and everything. Um, hey, peace out, guys. See you guys tomorrow.